Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 194 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast for the week of March 23rd, 2018. I am Chris Randazzo. I'm, uh, I can't pronounce my own name. <clears throat> I am Randazbo Chris. <laughs> I am Circo Zadnor and joining me tonight is bad enough dude, Dan Ryan. I certainly am, Chris. <laughs> but if there was anyone <laughs> that was bad enough, but it's would me. you rescue the president? <laughs> No. <laughs> this one? No. no. What about Not President Ronnie? Me. Maybe. Maybe. For absolutely Probably. no specific reason, Dan and I are going to talk about Data East tonight, and how much we love them and many of their games. But before we go any further, here is your weekly reminder that you can email us at mail at geekade.com. Just include the words Stone Age Gamer in the subject line. You can let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like us to discuss in the future, or just say hello, because we always want to hear from you, the listener. Uh, a quick bit of housekeeping, uh, just just a reminder in case you hadn't heard that Dan and housekeeping. I housekeeping housekeeping Dan and I are going to be uh, you want we're going to be pillow? doing some things. Uh, one of those things is uh, we're going to be commentating the retro cha- the 2018 retro challenge for Level Up Entertainment in the Hamilton Mall uh, in uh, Mays Landing, New Jersey, and uh, it's a whole retro tournament that's going on in their store throughout the. Uh, let's see from. The qualifiers are from April 1st through April 28th, and then the finals will be on Free Comic Book Day, which is May 5th, where Dan and I will be providing uh, color commentary for, which should be fun. The um, Let's see, the games for the preliminaries are um, from April 1st through 7th. The, the, we'll be doing a time attack of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out!, uh, from April 8th through 14th, there's a time attack for Map Zero. Uh, April 15th through 21st will be DuckTales. And April 22nd through 28th mm. is Sonic the Hedgehog. And mm. uh, the one, the winners from all four of these brackets, uh, all four of these uh, qualifying rounds, will be the four competitors in the finals, which will be on a to-be-announced thingamahoo. Uh because I didn't know that was supposed to be a secret. So if I already said on the show what the finals is, then just forget that I did that. <laughs> it, it's a time attack of Final Fantasy VII. Yes, beginning to end. Beginning <laughs> to end. It's going to be a really interesting challenge for us to commentate, Chris. Let's commentate the entire... Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. And it's not going to be played... And could, now he's know. walking to the left. And he's picked up a thing. Oh, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. It looked like a thing. Not a thing. Not played oh. concurrently either. Everyone will no. be playing in, in turns. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's going to be a seven-day affair. It's going to be the worst idea ever. <laughs> However, if you ever wanted to get through an entire like episode of this show where neither Chris nor I say fuck... This is probably your best bet. That's true, yeah, because it's going to be uh, you know one of these events, and uh, we're not really. Gonna I be mean, I'm cursing. I'm going to type it somewhere. <laughs> just going to keep. Just going to a napkin. Going to write it on a board. Going to write it on a post-it and hold it up periodically. Just, just for shits and giggles. Mm. Let's see. We're also going to be at a. Uh, I'll be hosting a table at Garden State Comic Fest. Uh, Geekade's going to have stuff. I'll be selling off some of my uh, the, the various sundry things in my collection at Garden State Comic Fest Atlantic City Edition. That's at the Showboat in Atlantic City. That's uh, April 7th and 8th. So that's super cool. And there will be a couple other Geekade personalities there as well to, to meet and discuss things with. Uh, let's... And Jay Lee, Chris. And Jay Lee. Oh, and Summer Glau is going to be there. <laughs> Totten here. Must be Summer. Ah. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. But Jay Lee, Chris, yeah. fucking love Jay Lee. I wonder if he's if he is consistently consistently looking down his nose at people, and that's why he always draws people like that. But I hope so. <laughs> I want him to draw me a sleepwalker. <laughs> <laughs> we are also going to be involved in some way, shape, or form, we don't know yet, in Too Many Games, which is uh, June 22nd through 24th. Uh, we're still not 100% sure on what we're doing with that, but we will be there doing something. Uh, I, uh, I actually figured out what we're doing, Chris. What are we doing? We're just going to be walking around going, eh, it's not that many games. <laughs> 
Uh, then uh, gar- regular Garden State Comic Fest, regular edition, uh, July 7th and 8th. That's in Morristown, New Jersey. We'll be there in some capacity, but we're still trying to plan the first one. Then in August, we're going to be at Long Island Retro, where we will be doing a panel. Uh, that is somewhere in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> that's not till august 11th i've barely even started to think about what we're doing with that one yet but uh we are doing a panel at that show we haven't figured out what we're doing yet but that's something to keep on your rate radar august 11th and 12th and then in september we're also going to be at a video game con uh at the very least me and dean are going to be there and we don't know who else is coming yet because that's in freaking september <laughs> but uh we are definitely yeah, going to be involved in that show that's as a well. long way away so that's that's the general housekeeping. Those are the things that are coming up uh, in the in the future, and you know, far far farther ahead in the future than I should even be thinking about. But uh, far far farther ahead, far far farther ahead. Uh, you know, I was reading my spiel at the end of uh, this week's episode last night. You know, the thing I say at the end of the episode, yeah. and I realized that you can tell how tired I am by how slowly I read that. And I was reading it <laughs> slow last night. <laughs> and I am... Why does it have a K? <laughs> I don't know. What the, who is this guy? Karice? I don't know. Who is Karice Randesno? Anyway, Dan, anyway. Uh, you, you said you had something you wanted to plug. So uh, why don't you tell us what's I going did- on? I did. Uh, this past weekend, uh, me and uh, and the wife, the the old ball and chain, <laughs> we uh, we we took a trip up to uh, up to the the northern part of New Jersey for friend of the show Lord Helmet's uh, birthday party. And while it was a fabulous time had by all, where I did get to finally play, and was super super impressed by the PlayStation VR. Huh. Uh, which yeah. we'll talk about in a minute, because god damn did I have a good time with that. Um, the first half of the party was at a place in Aberdeen, New Jersey, called Retro Relived. And what this is, is it's a room with a bunch of chairs and beanbags and consoles set up, and you go in and you pay your money for, uh, it's they charge uh, by the hour, and you go in and you know pay your money for your hour, and there's just a bunch of consoles set up. There was, I think, um, I think there was 11 stations set up around there that had various consoles on them. And you would find an open station and go up and look at the list of games um, that they had there, which was on a really nice computer interface. You just scroll through and, and look at the list of titles that were available. And I want to play Virtua Tennis and... Indeed, I did. I played Virtua Tennis against Tiff for a while, and and my roommate Nick came up, and uh, it was just like being back in college, where Nick and I used to sit in his uh, dorm room and play Virtua Tennis on the Dreamcast. So it was, um, it was really, really awesome. It was, it was a really good time, and it was the place was super cool, and he had a, a ton of game stuff set up, and. A ton of systems, like like a there was a 3DO set up there, which I don't know how much uh, action that thing gets, but there was a 3DO, and um, he had a lot of really uh, cool stuff up on uh, up on the walls. Like there looked like there were some old Mego figures, and like just you know retro toys and board games and stuff decorating the place. It was really cool. I dug it a lot, and he was a nice dude too. I'm just talking to the uh, the owner of the shop, and he was uh, he was talking to me about uh, wanting to. Uh, pick up an EverDrive hmm. before, like, and that was what we were talking about before. I was like, "Hey, I happen to uh, know a guy uh, <laughs> who might be able to uh, steer you in the right way towards one of those." So, uh, Retro Relived up in uh, Aberdeen, New Jersey. They're on uh, their Facebook, um, just RetroRelived dot com. Uh, check it out. Really, uh, really cool place. Nice. Similarly, last week I uh, went for our. Former Stone Age Gamer alum Mike Sheridan's birthday uh, on last uh, last Wednesday, you know, Castlevania. Uh, Castlevania. He was uh, he it was his birthday, and we went to Yestercades in Red Bank, and we had a super good time. Uh, what we decided to do was we got there when they opened, and our mission was to play every single arcade cabinet in the place, and we did. That's awesome. We did. We, did. we made it through the whole thing, <laughs> and it t- it took us until like. like- I don't know, five thirty. So we got there. <laughs> they opened at eleven thirty, 
And so we uh, we just kept rolling pretty much straight through. We did take a break for launch. We ate at Surf Taco, which was delicious. Ooh, um, Surf Taco's uh, badass. But yeah, I played a, a handful of things for the first time that I'd never really played before, uh, which was nice. Like, uh, I've never played... Um, uh, crap, now I can't remember what it's called. It's a Namco Tower of Draga, I think. Um, mm, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's the game I'm talking about, and I have to look it up. I like Tower of Draga. Mm, cool game. Is that the one that I was playing? Tower of Draga. Let me see. A, let me see a picture of it. Uh, cool. That was on a bunch of the. It was or not on a bunch. It was on one of the Namco. I think it was on the one with uh, Miss Pac-Man. I think you're right. Before. No, it, this was not the game that I was talking about. Man, what was that game called? Uh, Wizard of War, maybe. Oh boy. Oh no, no, uh, Donkey Kong. That was it. Wizard of War. That's, we played Wizard of War. I had never played Wizard of War before, and. Uh, that was a really that was a really fun game. Um, I, had, I don't know if I've played Wizard of War. I know I had. It's W O R. W O R. Yeah, yeah. I know I had I seen know. it before. I had never actually played it, and uh, well, now I have, and that was nice. Uh, I also I spent some time playing. Um, I hadn't. I realized when I actually played it that I never seriously played the Tron arcade game before. Just never really? really gave it. Just never really actually. I was just kind of assumed that I did, and like I saw that it, game so fun. Yeah, that game was really good. I did pretty well at Tempest. Mike had never played Tempest before, so that was really fun. Really? Uh, getting him to try that out. Uh, that was neat. Uh, you know, we played Bubble Bobble. We played. Jeez, um, I think everything else was something that I had played before. Um, Man, now I'm forgetting how I'm <laughs> forgetting everything that we went through. Like, they went by. It's such a such a, such a, a memorable blur. experience. It was it was it was actually quite ridiculous. <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun, and uh, it, similarly, no, that's that's a ton of stuff to play, especially if it took you that long. Like when I was up at Retro Relived, like I played uh, Altered Beast and Punch Out and Virtua Tennis, and then my two hours were gone. You know, <laughs> you know like it was just like, oh shit, like I'm done. You know, my arcade version of Punch Out was there. I definitely played that. I did shitty though. I did terrible. I only got up to the second bald bowl this time. Really? In a yeah. NES punch out. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of distractions. Yeah, on, I, I know, imagine. People I haven't seen in a couple years. Like, oh, dude, what's up? You know, That's... I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. I got hit by the bowl charge. Well, we played right. uh, 2005 Golden Shower Golf. I mean, Golden Tea Golf. <laughs> uh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, God, we played Revolution X. That made me want to throw up. Oh, uh, that's the best game ever. Played Bad Dudes for a little bit. I, I arc- we'll, we'll talk about Bad Dudes. <laughs> We uh, certainly we'll will talk Chris. about some burger time and uh, yeah, now, yeah, there was a lot of stuff. There was a lot of does, stuff. Uh, does does Yestercade have any of uh, what we won't be talking? At least I don't think we're going to be talking about it later. Any of the uh, pinball machines? Oh yes, yeah, ton of pinball machines, uh, including they, um, I... they had the Ninja Turtles one that Data East does. Uh, that was there. I'd never played that before, so I got to mess around with that. That was really cool. Obviously, they have Twilight Zone pinball, which I play every time. Love right. that machine to death. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Yesterkate's a great place, so go there. Oh, that was the other thing that they had that I had, I had never actually seen in person was the arcade version of Battletoads. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen that either. I I had never seen it in person before. I'd seen videos online. That game's really fun. Uh, it's, Is it? It's, it's, a, it's weird. It's, it's violent. It's, like, really violent. Like, um, Really? It's just, there's blood and stuff. There was a... Yeah, you know, they do the things where their arms turn into, like, different stuff. Well, I was... I forget who I was. I think it was Zitz. Or I was either Zitz or Pimple. I don't remember which one I was. Um, but, like, I'd knock over a dude, and then his arm would turn into a drill and start, like, beating on the guy when he was on the ground, and blood would just go shooting everywhere, Mortal Kombat style. It was That's awesome. Very unexpected, but oh, it, was, yeah. it was really fun. Very good-looking game. Very giant sprites and... Fairly well animated, but I, it, was, it was cool. It was cool stuff. Very happy. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, I, wanna, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I kind of wanted to run through something real quick. because so we mentioned this last week, and it's just I feel like it's one of those things that uh, we should at least briefly discuss. Um, the, the big Nintendo Direct that just went by, that we didn't really get to talk about at all. And today, there was also a Nindies showcase. Which had a yeah, I haven't even had a chance to check out any of the trailers from that. Um, um, but there was some 
at least some names and some pictures that look cool. There were, yeah, there were only four things. I mean, it was really short. It was like 15 minutes. Um, mm. and it was really short, but there were definitely a couple of games in the Nindy showcase that I was, uh, I was interested in, but, um, real- I don't know. It's just, I have this weird thing now, Chris, where every time I go to YouTube, to watch a video, I only watch the Avengers trailer. <laughs> I think my YouTube may be broken. Everything you or, click on just somehow turns into the... It uh, somehow turns into the Avengers trailer, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It's really not. I mean, I guess it depends on your perspective. Captain America doesn't seem to be having a very good time, but... I don't know. He seems to be enjoying himself. <laughs> he can Dude do that all day. to fight. Yeah. <laughs> he can do this all day. All right, so quick, let's let's rapid fire roll down these things and and whether or not we care about them. Uh, so we'll start with the Nintendo Direct, and we're not going to go into detail on most of this stuff because everyone's gone in excruciating detail on the Nintendo Direct, and it's it's been super fun. But I just thought I, I'd give some quick opinions and get yours. WarioWare Gold for 3DS. In fact, you know what? Let's lump this together. All the stuff that happened on 3DS. Did any of that matter to you? No. No. Detective Pikachu isn't being voiced by Danny DeVito, so I don't care. Yeah, uh, that's it. Yep. What was it? WarioWare Gold. I love WarioWare. I'm not buying it for 3DS. Dylan's Dead Heat right. Breakers. I love that they're still making Dylan's games, but I'm not buying this. Uh, Ma- ba- Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. They skipped over, what was it, Partners in Time? Uh, it's not coming out to 2019. What? Okay. Yeah, like, what, what is that about? <laughs> Talk about... It's, it's March, dudes. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Come on, what, man. What are you doing announcing a port coming out in 2019 on the 3DS? What? Anyway. How long, how long is this going to take you? <laughs> and I guess it's just to show that they're not giving up on the thing, which really bully for them, but whatever. Uh, sure. Uh, but... Porting the original Luigi's Mansion to 3DS. Also, uh, all right. Sure. Why not? Go, go sure, nuts. But, you know? I, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like the 3DS is now going to find itself, I think, in this weird spot where... With the new, 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 new 3DS uh, version, the non-3D 3DS Mm -hmm. that's out. The new 2DS. The new 2DS 3D. XL. Um, 4D? Does this one have motion? (laughs) Travels Um, through time. Smell-o-vision. They're going to find themselves in a weird spot because there are a metric fuck ton of awesome games on there, and it's going to be relatively cheap. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... So there are, it, I still think it's going to sell pretty well for at least another year or two. It's the PlayStation um, 2, you know, it's. Yeah, I mean, it, it really, like, and uh, a portable version of the original Luigi's Mansion for, like, a kid who's never played that, that's kind of awesome. And really, at this point, there's probably a lot of people who haven't played it because it's only on GameCube. It's never been ported to anything else, and the GameCube was yeah. several generations ago. So I, yeah, I, think I, mean, it's, I think it's a cool thing. And I, I like... I don't... Every I'm time, not buying it. Yeah, oh, but... no, me neither. I have the GameCube one. And, like, I would have bought this on Switch because I would have loved to play this game in HD. But here's the thing. You know, right. like, as much as I want every game in the world to come to Switch, and I do, but I can't begrudge them still supporting the 3DS. Like, I really can't. As much as I want to because of selfish reasons, it's like, dude, this is this is like the PlayStation 2. You can buy a 2DS, the stupid cheese wedge thing, for, like, 80 bucks. Like... Of course, this yeah. this system should d- just keep repackaging that stuff. Go nuts. Nice lower end option for people to get into, and there's a ton of great games on it. Yeah, Moving it's, it's going to be around for a while. <laughs> yeah, and I'm fine with that. It, it, the bulk of what they're doing is on Switch, and and that's that's good enough for me. Uh, Kirby Star Allies. They talked about that. You know that came out already. I didn't haven't gotten it yet because my local store was out of it. Uh, oh no, they actually didn't get it yet. So uh, they'll be getting it in, on Friday. So I'll be getting it in just a couple of days. I'm pretty stoked. Oh, Kami- it's selling very very well. It is, and that makes me happy. It's a very pretty game, and and I like the demo. I can't wait to play through it. Uh, Okami HD is coming to the Switch. Uh, That's awesome. It's it's Okami's yeah. great. Hooray! Good. Good on you. Don't know why this one took a little longer, but whatever. Sure. Okami. I don't know why they won't make an Okami 2. They just keep re-releasing that one. I mean, I know why they keep re-releasing that one. But yeah. Seriously, we're probably going to gonna get enough an H- interest. We'll get an HD version of Okami Den before we get actual Okami right? 2. Like, it's weird. Yeah, whatever. It's a weird thing. Uh, speaking of weird, Sushi Strike, The Way of Sushido. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even care what this game is. It's got the best title in this entire presentation. The Way really of does. Sushido. 
<laughs> it's my favorite form of martial arts. It really is. I don't know. This game looks weird. Uh, I, I, I give it a try depending on how much how expensive it is. It's weird that it's getting right. like a physical release on Switch. It just seems like such a downloadable kind of game. But they put a lot of production yeah. value in it. Did you see the like the animated cutscenes with voiceovers and stuff? Like, it looks. Pretty was that the part where where Spider Man was swinging? No. Or where Falcon was flying. I don't remember that part. I must have missed oh, that's it. Right. In the that's right. That's right. There's not enough Sushido in the, in the Affinity War. There's really not. I mean, that's going to be my Thanos biggest is in the armor and shit. And he's just, he's not practicing Sushido. I'm, no, he's really not. Not impressed. Which gem is that? Is that the Soul Stone? <laughs> that's where it is. It's is in that, sushi. Is that where it was? Because it wasn't in Black Panther. Nope. Spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. I'm supposed to do that in the other way around. Project Octopath Traveler is now just Octopath Traveler, which is one of the worst names I've ever heard for a video game. But and to be honest, I kind of like it less without Project in front of it, <laughs> which is like like has no bearing on the game itself. But Project Octopath Traveler sounds cooler than Octopath Traveler. Yeah, Octopath is a terrible word. I don't mm-hmm. even think it is a word. I think it's. I get I get it. Like it makes sense as a code name for whatever. This game looks super cool. I don't know if I'm gonna get it. Um I just don't know if it's for me. I still haven't even tried the demo, but it's a game that I'm super happy exists. Uh it looks just so cool. It does look very, very awesome. I am pretty uh pretty excited for it. I will never play it. Yeah, same I here. I just don't know that I have room in my life for a turn based RPG that doesn't star stick figures. We'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> Travis or isn't like uh, fucking South Park Chrono Trigger. <laughs> ah, true. I'll replay Chrono Trigger anytime. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, like the Secret of Ma- Mana remake in HD was like great. So uh, Chrono Trigger was it? I I've heard some real conflicting reports on that Secret of Mana I, for, HD. For what? From what I've heard, people who like Secret of Mana are way into this. Um, but uh, Chrono Trigger, like, come on. Yeah, get on it. Come on. Get, for real. Chop chop. Make it happen. Anyway. Practice some fucking Sushido. Make this happen. <laughs> Travis strikes again. No more heroes. I'm sold. Mm-hmm. D- d- mm-hmm. Sold. I, actually, I, people complaining that this game is like, I don't know, man. It looks kind of simple. Like, I don't care. This is like an old school hack and slash, but with no mm-hmm. more heroes paint. Give, sign me the hell up. Yeah, sold. I don't, you don't really need to convince me of that. Yeah. Uh, Dark Souls Remastered. Uh, bully for dark souls it's getting an online test uh and a freaking amiibo <laughs> yeah that's that's kind of awesome that's hilarious uh mario tennis aces comes out on my birthday so i'm buying the hell out of it it looks like a lot of fun and it looks like the game's actually pretty deep which is a complete turnaround from the previous uh mario tennis yeah. game on wii u that was like th- the most shallow tennis game ever so um yeah, yeah, I'm I'm actually uh, pretty excited for that. Yeah. Virtua Tennis uh, reignited my love of tennis video games. Yeah, and they can be really fun. And I love that this has a basic mode, too. So if you want to, like, just cut all the crap, if you want to cut the sheep dip and just get to some genuine fun tennis, then, uh... <laughs> poop! is a deep reference. <laughs> I took number two from every dumb dumb in this Mickey Ficky neighborhood. <laughs> and I'm not going to take it from a poop! It was too wienerless. <laughs> God, I love the state. Uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is coming out on Switch, and I couldn't be happier, and everyone should buy it. It's I might actually buy it this time. The game's great. It's great. It's wonderful. Uh, it's not super big. It's not super expensive. I think it's launching for the same price it launched on Wii U, which is like 40 bucks. Uh, mm-hmm. It's got some dude, some Mario Odyssey levels thrown in there. This, this game's awesome. I'm super happy about it. Uh, yeah, I wanted to buy it originally, but then I remembered it was on the Wii U, so I didn't. Yeah, and it used the Wii U screen a bunch in ways that yeah. like, I don't think were truly necessary. They're definitely going to need to work around some of those things, but I think it'll be easy enough to do, uh, right. which clearly they have because <laughs> the game's coming out. coming out. And it's yes. also coming out on 3DS, so cool, I guess. Good. Well, maybe I'll buy it on that. Good. Maybe Good. I'll actually go back and buy it on the Wii U now. <laughs> Should be cheaper. <laughs> Should be cheap enough. <laughs> Undertale is coming out on Switch eventually. Like that's literally awesome. eventually. <laughs> so that's awesome. I want to play that game. It's so weird. It's the weirdest game. 
I've been it's, people it's, have been telling me for years I need to play this game. It's bananas. I honestly think you're gonna hate it. Yeah, but I do think you should play it. That's that's weird. I've been I've been told that I'm gonna love it because it's it's got a lot of Earthbound flavor to it. I, I don't know. I, I'm excited. I'm gonna pick it up when it comes out because I'm I'm a I am a supporter of it. I definitely like the music that I've heard from it. So the music is great. I'm jazzed. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just weird. Speaking of weird, the Crash Bandicoot and Sane trilogy. Yeah, it kind of bums me out only because, like, it's so identifiable with Sony. Yeah, you know, like I mean, sure, whatever. Put it, it it's not going to be their number one seller, but you know, um, it's kind of cool, like that it's coming to other platforms and other people can experience it because those original games were only ever on. Yeah, they were. They 1, were right. They, they never were made got for the place. Yeah, you're right. They didn't yeah. get ported. Crash eventually showed up in you know other games on other platforms, but that yeah, original trilogy by Naughty Dog yeah. was was very exclusively to Sony. But what's weird is that like well, you mentioned that they w- weren't their biggest sellers. That and the same trilogy did like obscenely oh, well. It did phenomenally well. I'm just saying, by the end of the year, it's not going to be like. Oh shit! That that beat out God of War. Who saw that coming? You know, like that's not going to be the thing. Yeah, but it is still like how much that game sold is very impressive. So it makes all the sense. People love Crash to put this on other platforms. It's just so weird that like this is this is as weird as when almost as weird as when Sonic came over to Nintendo. Now, granted, it wasn't quite as weird because Crash has appeared on Nintendo before, but right. these original right. games, like this, is essentially a Naughty Dog game on a Nintendo platform. That's weird. That is weird. And didn't they um didn't they also announce the uh Spyro remaster? Or is Did that, that not get announced? announced I, don't, I don't know if that's been a fi- if that's been it's made like the yet. worst kept secret ever. Yeah. It's yeah. this is that, like that is the coming. rabbits Mario Rabbits crossover all over again. Like I swear if they yeah. announce this at E three with any expectation that it's gonna be a surprise. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that that 'cause that that has to happen. It just has to. That's the other thing, you know. And Spyro oh, yeah. deserves better than Spyro Skylanders. And Spyro is great. Yeah, the original Spyro games were were pretty cool. I never really got into them. Just like Crash, that's what's interesting about this Crash thing. Like, I never got into those Crash games on PlayStation. I didn't think the first one was very good, and so I didn't really mess they with were, two or three. They were fine. They weren't really my thing. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in giving them a shot when it comes out on Switch. I, I don't know. All right, let's keep blowing through this stuff. Little Nightmares Complete Edition. I heard this is something cool. I don't know anything about it. I don't know much about it either. Cool. South Park, the fractured butthole. Yes. Uh, I Sold. Yeah. I mean, I never got a chance to play it because uh, this was only on, what, PS4 and uh, Xbox One, right? Yeah. I didn't get to play the Stick of Truth either, and that is just because I wasn't buying PS3 or 360 games at that point, nor did I really have a time in my life for a turn-based RPG, but this one I might pick up. Uh, if you like South Park, I, I mean, it, it's hysterical. It looks amazing. I've heard nothing but good things, so hooray. Yeah, if if you don't think South Park is funny, then I, I don't even know why you would entertain buying the game. That's true. I do it, think. I, I used to love <laughs> South Park. I haven't watched it in a very long time, but I, I don't think that's... Uh, I don't think it means that I don't like South Park. <laughs> Just kind of fell off of it. I think yeah, I'll like no, it. It's funny. And the gameplay's fine. Yeah. And it looks you know, really like cool. It, I, I, I love the tech behind good. the way this game looks. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is coming out on May 18th. Yeah. Okay. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> it's I one mean, of those great. things that I might wind up buying because it's a Zelda game and I've come this far. You know, I have every Zelda game, so. Uh, you're uh, going to buy it. I am going to buy it. It's a question of whether or not I'm going to buy it and actually try to play it. Because here's the thing. I did have a little bit of fun with the Wii U version of Hyrule Warriors. It's sure f- so stupid. But it's got a right. lot of what I learned from my friend uh, Mauricio, who's really into these Muso type games, is that when he came over to my house and played it, he was like, this doesn't have a lot of the, uh, I'd call them quality of life things that the more modern Dynasty Warriors games have. It's like, they're, 
the mission structure and whatnot is very like you can't just pick up and play it for a couple of minutes and that was kind of why mm-hmm. i stopped playing it because you know, it was kind of fun in a stupid brainless sort of way but it, you had to spend a chunk of time on it apparently in the 3ds version they fixed the way that worked and made it a little bit more you know easy to pick up and you know play a chunk at a time and if all that kind of quality of life stuff carries over to this definitive edition which i think it does i might actually get some play time out of this one so right and really yeah, that's, just, that's not really a thing where you're like, I'm going to devote the next four hours to fucking Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, that's like, not no, me. <laughs> I'm not going to hit X for the next four hours. I'm just not going to do it. You know, I want to play as Tangle and beat up Bokoblins with a bag of money. Like, that's funny for 15 minutes. I right, just, if that's... Uh, 15's a bit 15, a yeah, 15's a, a stretch. You know, five minutes, and then I'll switch over to the King of Red Lions and turn into yeah. a freaking boat. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, just the that's sheer great. ridiculousness of, of enjoying that. But So that's a thing. And again, that's, that's another one that if that comes out at 60 bucks, like, no. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm sure it's going to be 60 bucks. 30 bucks? Sure. Yeah. But like full price for that shit? It's, nah, it's cool. probably going to be full price. I mean, if it's 40 bucks, I'll think about it. Anything 40 or below, I'll, I'll give a serious consideration. Otherwise, I'll wait. I'll wait. It'll, it'll be around. I don't think Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is going away. Right. Uh, then they announced some arms tournament thing. I'm glad they're keeping up with this game. Uh, then they talked about the Octo expansion for Splatoon 2, which looks super cool. I love yeah, the single cool. player game in Splatoon and Splatoon 2, and just to have a whole single player expansion, I am buying the hell out of this because it's yeah, what it's like a very cool idea. Eighty some odd missions that are that have been added to it. Like it's a pretty beefy expansion, and uh, I well, love the character designs Octo. and Octo Eight. indeed. Eight. You know, I, I'm I'm sold. I I can't wait to play through this. It'll it'll be so nice to have new levels for Splatoon 2, and I hope that they finish it off a little better because the last boss. Last boss in Splatoon One was really cool. The last boss in Splatoon Two was kind of a letdown. So um, mm. I'm hoping for some really cool, really cool creative stuff in this one, which, according to the trailer, looks really nice. And then, of course, there was the ending, the Smash reveal. That uh, so I'm sitting on my couch watching this with my son, watching this whole thing, and we're we he was really stoked about the Splatoon expansion because he loves Splatoon. He loves the single player Splatoon stuff, right? And then we got to this thing, and it starts. I'm like, oh, that's the trailer. That's the original trailer for Splatoon. Oh, no, there's all sorts of cool stuff. And then I'm just looking at the way this is animating and the way they're moving, and it's so high quality. I'm like, I said out loud, is this Smash? And uh, I, I we just sat there and looked at it and watched the screen go dark and then watched her turn around. And as soon as that Smash ball showed up in her eye, I like just – I very – calmly lost my shit because <laughs> I, I didn't want to worry s- my son i didn't want to scare him but i very calmly lost my shit and i'm not gonna lie to you what excites uh, what all right first off there's a lot of confusion as to whether or not this is a new game or a port i'm leaning towards it being a new game because um i would i would think so yeah it's got a new logo uh, a link is Breath of the Wild Link, which means mm-hmm. his old move set wouldn't make sense for that character design. So, I, I think there's enough evidence leaning towards this being a new game. Sakurai's been working on it. He said that he's been working on it since the last DLC character was done in the, in the Wii U game. Uh, and everyone's like, oh, it would take too long to make this game. Like, look how long it took them to make Smash for Wii U. Like, well, he was making it for Wii U and 3DS. So I, I think it's reasonable to think that it's possible this game could exist in, in that much time. Especially if they're doing a thing where they're starting off with a slower roster and then adding characters gradually, like they have did with, like, Splatoon or even something like Street Fighter V, except not shitty. Uh, right. <laughs> I, think there's, I think there's a lot of potential, and I think this should be a new game. But, um... Really, more than the game itself, I'm just excited for Smash hype again. <laughs> it's like my favorite well, thing in the world. And it's this year. It's this year, which is insane. That changes my entire outlook on what the... We were just talking about the Switch is like, well, what does their 2018 look like? And they were what they were missing is a heavy hitter, and now they have it. So now the right. Switch's 2018 lineup is actually looking pretty darn good because any of the other stuff that they're kind of billing as big games is like, well, yeah, they're big enough because Smash is coming later this year, and that's going to be their big, big game. And we don't even... E3 hasn't even happened yet, so we don't even know what else yeah. is coming. So 
Yeah, I, I mean that Smash is going to be huge on Switch. Absolutely, I, it, yeah. It is. It is going to be just this massive, massive thing. And like, I showed my daughter the trailer, and when the inkling turned around and the Smash Ball was in the eye, she did not very quietly lose her shit. <laughs> I was internally she very audibly. I was <laughs> internally very shit. loudly losing my shit. Uh, yeah, but. she was so, so excited. It was such a great reveal, too. Like, that was very, very well done. Yeah, it was very well done. I think it was pretty surprising. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I called it. Of course, they're doing Smash. Like, well, I didn't call it because well, it's a freaking March Nintendo Direct. Yeah, Smash is one of their biggest properties. How I didn't expect them to announce that in freaking March, but they did. And they think they did it really well with a great trailer, with a great reveal. I'm excited. I'm excited for this Smash hype. I'm excited for all the speculation about what characters are going to be in it, what guest characters, what returning stages. I'm just excited. I'm so happy. This right. whole thing and if we, thrilled me. If we can't get Shovel Knight and Soul Calibur, which obviously is not going to happen, <laughs> maybe we can get Shovel Knight and Smash. I would, at this point, I'd be shocked. I mean, he just seems like such a perfect fit, such a natural fit. And they uh, today, Phil Spencer, right? That's who's in charge of Xbox. So he tweeted that he's totally down for Banjo and Smash. <laughs> so, Which would be awesome. That would be awesome. I, I love that idea. Make it happen. I mean, like, I'm, I'm all for competition, right? I mean, obviously, we've talked about it plenty of times. Competition, yada, yada, yada. It's good for gamers, whatever. But don't be dicks yeah. at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, well, Let's play well this together. This would be cool. Yeah, put Banjo-Kazooie in Smash. I mean, everyone knows Banjo-Kazooie's... The, the, it's, it's home is Nintendo. It's, it's one of those things. It's, yeah. You know, Metal Gear's home was originally Nintendo in America, but, you know, PlayStation took that over properly now metal gear belongs on playstation like it's always right. i'll always have a place in nintendo history but it's a nintendo it's a playstation thing more or less you know when you think that is associated with playstation banjo kazooie is not associated with xbox like at all no no <laughs> it, never will be it just it just won't be it's so ingrained in nintendo dna it's uh that would though well, and it it would be super cool to see like kratos in Smash Brothers. I mean, it would be like such a ridiculous thing, but like, but Bayonetta is nice, in there. Kids. So yeah, I play nicely, you know, like it would be cool. It would be funny or maybe like put Sir Daniel Fortescue. That's probably a better fit for Smash Brothers. Or crash and smash. You know, that would be crash and smash. Be good stuff. Would it would be, be it would be cool. I would like to see something like that. Or one of the fucking ape escape monkeys with the little kid. <laughs> That would just be, be cool. really, really cool to see that kind of stuff. So I'm excited for Smash. Blew my mind. Uh, I thought that was a great Nintendo Direct. And uh, my outlook for the Switch for the rest of the year, as good as it was, is now even better. Uh, now, quick moving on to the Nindy Showcase that was just this afternoon. Um, I was sad to not see uh, Runner 3 in it, especially since they mm -hmm. just announced the release date to Runner 3. It's coming out in May. Uh, and a new trailer, Runner 3 looks incredible. But uh, let's see, what were the games? They showed off Mark of the Ninja Remastered. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know about this original game, but it was published by Microsoft. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a remastered version that is not published by Microsoft. Uh, they didn't show any gameplay, just some cinematic looking stuff. I don't know anything about this game, but all right, neat. I don't either. But I like the name. Yeah, Mark of the Ninja. But really, this game had better be darn good to compete with my favorite game from this, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, Banner Saga 3, as well as 1 and 2, are coming to Switch. Which is awesome. Those games are very cool. Okay, I know I've heard of them. I don't know anything about them. Um, they're very cool. They look great. They're, they're good. Neat. It's worth being excited about it. All right, cool. Uh, Luminous Remastered. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. That I is really awesome. Cool. Luminous is great. And they were talk I was reading something today that they're doing something like something really stupid stupid cool with um uh the the H D rumble with this game. Since mm. it's got like such a like a rhythm kind of thing to it, like the the bass line or whatever, or the, the, the drum beat is supposed to be really important to the gameplay. I never got this game. I really I, I bought it on PSP and I stuck with it for a little bit, but it just never clicked with me the way puzzle games usually do. I don't know why. So I mean I'll this is probably gonna be a pass for me, but neat. 
Mm-hmm. I'm glad it's coming on other platforms. Everyone likes Luminous. Hooray. Uh, Just Shapes and Beats was one of the games that I am most excited for out of this. Uh, I'm waiting for them to release an actual just solo trailer for this. Uh, the only thing I've mm-hmm. seen on it so far was the stuff they showed off in the showcase. Uh, it's being c- called a musical bullet hell game. Uh, it, it's, um, there's the soundtrack is composed by 20 chiptune artists. So like the little bit of music I heard in the trailer sounds awesome and it just looks nuts. It just looks absolutely insane. It defies description. Really. It's, it's something you got to see. Uh, if you didn't watch this yet, I know you haven't, um, just wait till you see this game. It's just looks, it looks really cool. It's directly up my alley. So that's super cool. Uh, reigns Kings and queen. Uh, my buddy John mentioned that he had played this on his mobile phone and he thought it was super cool. So he was really excited. This was coming to switch. Mm -hmm. It looked pretty boring to me. me. (laughs) It was just like some cards and they'd swipe left or right. And, uh, I don't know, whatever. It's like, uh, Tinder, the video game. (laughs) Yeah. Is that the one where you swipe left and right? I don't know. I I think so. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, this is definitely the the thing on uh, of this that made me super excited is a game called The Messenger. Uh, it looks mm-hmm. like Ninja Gaiden. Uh, it looks Sold. actually kind of like Ninja Gaiden with bits of like uh, bits of Shovel Knight and Legend of Kage thrown in. Like it's a little bit more vertical than than NES Ninja Gaiden. Uh, and it's like it's this super cool like glorified eight bit thing going on the whole time, and then at some point mm-hmm. in the trailer, it turns into a sixteen bit game, and I'm like, I don't know what's happening, but I want it. This game <laughs> looks I mean. so sick. It's called The Messenger. It looks very much like a love letter to the original Ninja Gaiden games and just ninja games from the eighties in general. I am so all about this game. The Messenger looks stupid good. Uh, Fantasy Strike. This looks uh, this looks dumb. I was not <laughs> I was not pleased with this game in the least. Uh, this was the second game they actually showed off in the showcase. I was like, "Wow, I guess I'm glad they're getting this one out of the way." It's it's like a one on one fighting game where the characters are just like fantasy archetypes. I don't know. I think it looks stupid, but whatever. <laughs> Mage versus. Yeah, I mean, like Mac the Knight. Street Fighter collection's yeah. coming out. Like you got to be doing something real special to be releasing a 2D fighter at this point uh, on the Switch yeah. anytime near when that Street Fighter collection is coming out. Yeah, like oh, what I can play online Third Strike. Uh, yeah, so okay. okay. Don't need to play Fantasy Strike. Whatever. Uh, Pool Panic from Adult Swim Games. Uh, I, I have no idea what to make of this game. This is this is weird. Um, it's uh you play as a cue ball and like mm-hmm. it's kind of like a platformer but you like have to keep hitting this sentient cue ball with a pool stick mm-hmm. it's weird i don't know look at it it's weird <laughs> um a game called garage is coming out from tiny build games who did their own like little mini presentation right after the nindies direct uh it's a top-down um super gory vhs era B movie action killer game. I don't know. It looks all right. Doesn't really look like anything to me, but um, I could see the draw. Not really for me. All right, then. A game called Lightfall, which um, I don't know. Looks like you're it, this. This is this looks like a relatively generic um indie 2d platformer of which there are tons of indie 2d platformers it's oh there there are plenty this game probably would have really impressed me five or six years ago when this stuff was still fairly new you know like getting these super cool new games but after having played uh celeste and dandara already this year i don't know this just didn't really do anything for me it didn't really look all that interesting there's there's just there's too many of these kinds of games and this uh, just didn't look like it was doing anything all that special. Like, you can summon some sort of box to do, like, weird jumping things up and down walls. And it's got a very, like, silhouette kind of design. And I don't know, just didn't didn't grab me. Yeah, I mean, now now that this has become, like, a full-fledged genre of games, mm-hmm. you know, this isn't just, like, a cute, quirky, like, oh, cool, it's, like, retro and, like, 2D. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Now it's just got to be good. Like, <laughs> This is just a thing now, so it has to be good. Yeah. Or it has, it has to, to be good out. or interesting, just like back in the day on the Super Nintendo when I was buying platformers, they had to be interesting and good. And right. a lot of the times they were. And like I said, this year alone, I've already played two absolutely incredible 2D platformers. So 
I mean, and this next one has sold me. It's another 2D platformer. It's called Bomb Chicken. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I am so sold on this. I love the art style. You play as this, like, round, jiggly chicken (laughs) that lays bombs instead of eggs. And you Mm -hmm. use them. It's kind of like got almost a box boy flavor to it where you... You can not only use the bombs for offense, but also as your, like, platforming tool. It's like if you need to get up to a high area, you just lay, like, a whole stack of bombs, and then you jump off of them, and that's how you get to different places. This game looks stupid good. Um, that's coming out, it's coming out on Switch this summer. It's, a lot of these games were launching first on Switch, which I thought was neat, that they're, you know, starting here. Like, they, they, they're doing a really good job of curating indies, I think. Um, they really are, which is great. Agreed. And this bomb chicken, I'm so sold on this. I'm buying the hell out of it. Bomb chicken. Say the name. Bomb chicken. Pode? Pode? I don't even remember this. I remember them saying the name. I I got nothing. This one also didn't really grab me. Uh, West of Loathing is the other game that I am completely freaking sold on. And I I don't even really understand what it is. But it's all stick figures. The trailer actually mm-hmm. says in glorious black and white. Um, it looks like stick figure theater from uh, uh, Liquid Television. And it looks super funny. It's got a, a ridiculous um, sense of humor. There's apparently tons of hats that you can collect. Uh, it's got turn-paced RPG elements. Uh, mm-hmm. What is it? The, the mm-hmm. description here is saying, is West of Loathing is a slapstick comedy stick figure Wild West adventure role-playing game. <laughs> It's a bold move, Commander. I'm all for it. Like seriously, this this trailer absolutely sold me because as much as it's like ridiculous the way it looks, it looks quite sharp. It's it it's stick figures like not crappy stick figures. They look like right. this day they they look almost um they're not quite Don Hertzfeld, you know? Um because they're not quite as squiggle vision as Don Hertzfeld stuff. They're a bit cleaner. Angry so. ticks just warm out of my nose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And if you don't know Don Hertzfeld kids, just look up Rejected and watch it and then show it to all of your friends. Uh, it's the best. It is literally the best thing ever. It is It is easily the best thing that anyone's ever created. Uh, so West of Loathing also sold on that. And then the last one on the list, I don't even remember this one, Bad North. Uh, oh, yeah, I okay. do remember this. It's like some weird real-time strategy game. It looked completely outside of the realm of things that I give a crap about, so I didn't pay any attention to it. <laughs> so, I'm sure it's I, great. <laughs> every time one of these happens and there is not an announcement for new Gunman Clive, I consider it to be a gigantic fail. Oh, but he's working on something. He's uh, the guy. Ah, they just announced something. He just announced something. Um uh, Hor- was it more Gunman Clive? Or, no, it's something else. He's he's got a new thing that he's working on, and it looks stupid, stupid cool. Oh uh, crap! Um, who did that? Because I, I want to play Gunman Clive on PSVR. Jesus Christ, <laughs> dude! I had such a good time with that system. I re- I mean, I, I it's it's just not for what? me. Okay, what did you play on it? I played Thumper. Which um, is supposed like that game sold a shit ton on Switch, and everyone talks about how that game is amazing. I must just be missing something because I, I it didn't really grab me. And I played that really cool bomb defusing game. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that was a lot of fun. Just keep talking and nobody explodes or something like that. Something like that, yeah. And and that was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, but uh, just I don't know, just messing around with it. I just don't think VR is for me because um, it just I played. Okay, I played the um, just the uh, the toy box thing, and there was one game mode where wearing the VR, you were sitting in like a uh, a turret, mm-hmm. and you were just firing at all these like little block creatures that were coming at you, and your uh, you could have up to three other people playing at the same time, and they would control mechs. And they would just run around like punching shit. These little these block creatures, mm-hmm. and it was so much fucking fun. Like it was a blast because like what I was really blown away by was how big everything was. You know, like I I kind of assumed that when I put it on, it would be like looking at a screen, but like this, 
putting it on and like looking up it was just this whole immersive thing and like that game was super fun we played another one where you were a cat like if you had the vr set on you were a cat <laughs> and you had to um like you would lean closer to the camera and like you would peek your head out of this curtain as like the people who had controllers were mice trying to steal cheese which is kind of dumb but it was really fun and then there was one where you were like the giant like a big lizard thing and you had to like headbutt buildings out of the way as you were destroying the city trying to like smash these dudes and if uh if they like blew you up at the end because like you would run through the city right and you would get to the end and the people with the controllers were these little robot guys. And um, they're like the, the little mascots that they have in this. this Because it's a free, like, demo thing that they have. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, the little robot mascots would, like, you would pick up stuff and, like, throw it at the, uh, at the big dinosaur thing. So if you're wearing the VR headset, like, this stuff is flying at your head and you're, like, ducking out of the way. And, like, but if you don't duck out of the way in time, like, a piano hits you in the fucking face. And, like, if you get hit enough you get shot back into space and like it was just it was a fucking blast man i had so much goddamn fun with it i was so surprised so surprised by playing through this well i mean i'm glad you enjoyed it i mean clearly you're not alone i mean my buddy tony brought it over to my house and uh really he was in love with it and he's super glad that he has it but just i guess i don't know i just i don't know, I don't know why it's I can't, not for I me can't, i can't wait to get one can't wait like in tiff played it and you know the the whole car ride home from mike's house we were like so uh you think like walmart might have some are they open can we like stop now and get it i think we want to get it now you know and we're gonna wait a little bit to see like what e3 has to offer mm -hmm. um you know because like i really want to play the psychonauts game i was just gonna there. say there's a freaking vr psychonauts game so like vr psychonauts <laughs> i it's, come on man i'm fucking super into it and then there was, I was looking through, because, you know, Sony likes to put, like, stuff up for free. I really derailed our conversation. I'm very sorry. But um, <laughs> Sony likes to like, put stuff up for free for a little bit, and then they, like, pull it off the store. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking go on and, like, download a bunch of stuff off the PlayStation Store now um, and, like, hold on to it, you know? Because, like, whatever. Once you purchase it, you can keep downloading it. And there was, like, ridiculous stuff on the PlayStation Store. Like, there's this one thing called, like, Experiences or something, where it's just, like, you can go to the beach or, like, the mountains, and, like, it's just there in front of you. But you can also link, and I don't know exactly how it works because I don't have it yet, but you can link your phone to the game so that in the virtual reality world, like, when you click on Facebook on your phone your Facebook feed is just going to pop up in the air while you're, like, pseudo-sitting on the beach in virtual reality. And that is the kind of vacationing I can get behind, Chris. <laughs> like, it's shitty outside. <laughs> We're about to get 38,000 feet of snow over the next two days because there's another fucking nor'easter coming. And there's one coming on Sunday, too. Um, there's all this stuff coming, and it's like, I'm going to go to the beach today. And look at my Facebook feed in virtual reality. It is some oasis level shit that I can get behind. <laughs> I'm into it. All right, man. <laughs> I, I, I'm fucking into it. I, I, it puts me closer, Chris. There are two things that I have always wanted in life. One, I have always wanted an excellent, top notch, triple A version of Inner Space, the movie, the game. And I feel like we're closer. Okay. Nothing? Really? Okay. Do you know, not know the movie? Uh, yeah, you, you lost me. Okay. It was way funnier than you acted. Because that shit's fucking funny. I bet you Ferg is laughing his balls off right now. <laughs> that is some, some shit that Ferg will fucking appreciate. God damn it. And second, we're like one step closer to, to Lawnmower Man. And that is some shit I can get behind. And is that a reference that is lost on you too, Chris? I mean, I've never seen it, but wasn't oh wasn't God. that like a wasn't that a bad thing? Isn't it a bad yes. thing to get close to Lawnmower Man? Job loses his shit. But like that's the thing. For for people of a certain <laughs> age, Chris, 
for, for those of us that have a certain number of years on our belts, virtual reality is like the holy grail, right? Like, that's, that's the thing. Like, since we were kids, man, it's like, dude, fucking virtual reality. Like, that's the, the thing. The holodeck. Yeah, like, we're, we're getting closer. And I'm really, like, I'm excited for this year's E3, like, when Sony announces the haptic gloves that go along with PlayStation VR. That's a fucking shit I want. I want it, Chris. I want to be able to pick stuff up. <laughs> well, I mean... I'm glad so, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited for it because uh I'm <laughs> like giving my Atari joystick. <laughs> <laughs> I feared change, Dan. <laughs> but right, like okay, so take an Atari game and imagine adventure but in <laughs> VR. No like, remake all of those games. Not with the fucking like giant duck thing. Yes, but, with like, the giant duck it. thing. I want that in VR. That's actually way scarier. <laughs> Just like, coming at a... you. And... Oh, wow. <laughs> You've read Ready Player One, right? I have. The idea that they have in that book, that Ernest Klein had in that book, of taking the old text-based adventures and turning them into virtual reality first-person adventure games is such a cool idea. I want to fucking play Zork. In first-person virtual reality. Well, someday, Dan. Someday. God, God willing, and the creek don't rise, Chris. <laughs> or what? I don't know. I'm not from the south. I just live there. I think that's a thing. <laughs> Grits, right? That's. A- <laughs> so, so I I do want to point out here, though, Chris. Fifty-seven minutes into our episode about Data East games, we have not fucking talked about them yet. So we're gonna take ourselves a quick break, <laughs> <laughs> and when we come, and we're back, gonna spend five minutes on our feature topic. We're gonna talk about Data East because, uh, well, I don't know, we had shit to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, we weren't being boring, oh. right? This is a good time. No, we're uh, we're recording episodes one and two here, kids. Bad dudes. This will be a split. <laughs> Bad dudes. So yes, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. When we come back, we're going to profess our love for Data East, which I think is going to go rather well. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. And now here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at Geekade.com. First up, on an all-new episode of Non-Stop Comic Shop, it's time for T'Challa Palooza. What does that mean? I'm not entirely sure, but it does involve a trip to Nelson Mandela's Pants Dimension, so it's about that going for it. Plus, the guys give their review of the Black Panther movie. Did they like it as much as the rest of the world does? Find out in Non-Stop Comic Shop, number 18, works 60% of the time every time did you see the picture of the guy that cosplayed as Black Panther but like with Pink Panther head no but I'm way into it it's uh, it's it's amazing I love this idea I'm gonna I I sent it to Karen this morning uh, because it's just the most amazing thing so I'm gonna send this to you I'm just gonna send this picture over to you because you need to see it uh, I'm gonna throw it in the Slack chat because uh, that's what okay. we do. Also, I what put a do. link to the uh, Bertil Horberg's new game <clears throat> in there, which is like a. Th- oh, is that uh, the uh, Gunman Clive dude? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Games are so good. Thank you so much. Next. Sometimes Geekade likes to teach valuable lessons, and this month, Alex Azar teaches us that if you're... What? What? Oh, you're laughing at the Black Panther. I just looked at the fucking picture. <laughs> genius. Absolute that's, genius. That's so much fucking funnier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's the fucking eyebrows. The eyebrows yeah. really set it apart. They're actually like, like without those eyebrows, the head, it would be yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking fantastic. 
Holy oh. shit, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh my god. Next Sorry. up, <laughs> sometimes Geekade likes to teach valuable lessons, and this month Alex Azar teaches us that if you're a scumbag and your ex is a voodoo priestess, you probably shouldn't try to take advantage of your relationship to con someone out of their money. It's a tale as old as time, and a lesson that rings as true today as it did back in 1990 when the Crypt Keeper put on his sunglasses and imparted his bounty of wisdom on us all. Find out just what fresh hell I'm talking about in Rising from the Crypt Till Death, located in the Think Tank. Speaking of Tales from the Crypt, Data East, world's greatest pinball game, Tales from the Crypt. Finally, not that long ago, Chris, television, you know, those gigantic fucking things that we now hang on our walls because we're super fancy and live in the future. You know yeah, what I'm talking about? I've, I've seen, I'm aware of televisions. <laughs> I understand that they... I'm currently TV adjacent. <laughs> you are TV adjacent? Nice. Well, not that long ago, Chris, TV was in a very different place. And I'm not just talking about on top of like that shitty fireplace thing that we all bought. You know, like that fake one that you lit up and it was like, oh, look, it's a fireplace. Like, oh, no, that's not what I'm talking about, Chris. TV shows weren't getting away with what they do today. And shows like Archer and Bojack Horseman simply couldn't have existed. Could not have. Preach. I will. Are you like, do you have your head down and like one hand in the air? How did you know? Shaking your head back and forth like you're at an Aaron Neville concert? Yes. (laughs) The Simpsons, Chris. They changed the whole thing. They did. They opened the door. Actually, I'm trying to. (laughs) I can't fucking preach if you're going to keep yelling preach. Amen! (laughs) Jeebus! Opening the door for networks to try their hands at all sorts of crazy new animation to try and leech off of some of that four-fingered yellow-tinted success. Many Glad of you said tinted, because that's not why I thought you said it first. What did you think I said? Uh, spatula? <laughs> tinted, spatula. I, I mean, virtually the same thing. Testify, Dan, testify. <laughs> Many, Chris, many, many, more than a handful of these trailblazing shows just so happen to be in the children's animation category, and one of the very best of them is Rocco's Modern Life. Life. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it. Oh, it's life. <laughs> is it? It's I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Evan, he's not here right it's coming back for one last ride in the not too distant future, like when we'll be at too many games or Long Island Retro. Mm-hmm. That's true. So Trish is looking back at the original series' brilliance and why it was taken from us just a bit too soon. Don't miss Chris. Don't fucking miss Chris before their time. Rocco's modern life. I won't miss it because I edited it. I've already read it. I said, don't miss it. I won't. Don't testify. Testify. You can catch all this great stuff plus tons of other articles, videos, podcasts, and more right now at geekhead.com. Okay, so we are back. Uh, we were just talking about TV shows that we want to watch, and that's not this podcast. So we're going to talk about Data East. Data East, Dan. So I love Data East, Chris. Me too, and that's how this came up. We were talking about this a while ago, just on the show. Data East came up, and we were like, we should do a Data East episode. And so here we are. Burger time. Burger time. Who doesn't love burger I, so- time? How do we want to do this? Because we're not even going to talk about their pinball machines, of which they made amazing fucking pinball machines. They did. That is true. Um, I, I figure a nice way to go about this, at least to start, would be to talk about like how we got introduced to Data East. So like, what was your first interaction with Data East? Karate Champ. Really? Arcade Karate okay. Champ. Yep. There used to be one um, at, oh, God, it was either a James Way or a Kmart in the town that I grew up in. Um, James Way is a store that doesn't even fucking exist anymore. 
Hey, um, so's Kmart. Yeah, I, really? Are they all out of business now? Are they? And I so is Toys R Us. Uh, well, Toys R Us has Toys R Us is an interesting situation going on right now. They're not a hundred percent going to go all disappeared. They're they better not. Like there's, a, I think there's like a couple a couple of different companies that are interested in trying to salvage the brand in some way. But how about that weird shit where KB's coming back? Yeah, like like KB's gonna buy fucking Toys R Us. I swear to God, if Lionel Kitty City shows the fuck back up again, I am gonna <laughs> I am out. I love Kitty <laughs> that, City. That damn kangaroo with fucking I don't know if that's an East Coast thing or not. That kangaroo like, is definitely not as cool as Jeffrey. But the thing that's cool no, about KB service merchandise is coming back. It's gonna be weird. KB be coming back is Bradley's. smart because fucking Woolworths, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's head over to Clover. To... Best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's gonna be a best. It's gonna be ridiculous. Like with with a uh, anyway. KB, the thing about Toys R Us is that it's these these gigantic pieces of real estate, and like you know, it it's not really tailored itself too well to modern retail. And no, no, it could be Toys R Us could be successful. It ha- it has been run into the ground by being run incredibly poorly. There's just it's, it's a toy store. It's not How do you a secret. Fuck that up. Uh, by being Toys R Us, you and me have both worked there. We we know what goes on at Toys R Us. That's a good um, point. Yeah, no, it, it's it's not easy. I'm not saying that it's an easy thing to run, especially with all the competition. But like, there is no question that this this company has been run into the ground. So it's not surprising to hear that Toys R Us is is going uh, defunct. But with KB coming back and not having like any stores to revive, you know, they can look at their real estate intelligently you know they can figure out what works as a modern toy store without having to deal with any of the fact like they're not trying to repurpose any of their existing stores because they don't exist anymore right so it's like starting from scratch except with some brand recognition so anyway that was a tangent well we'll do a whole other podcast on that so yeah yeah, anyway um it was a james way or like a kmart or some fucking department store basically kids if you're listening um target at one point would have had coin operated video game machines we called them arcade games back in the day um it at the front of their store up by like the fucking uh the gumball machines and shit and um karate champ was there and i was always uh, fascinated by this game because i was a kid who grew up in the 80s of course i loved karate things like anything that had karate in the title i was pretty fucking sold on and this one was so weird because it had two joysticks. Not a joystick and buttons, but two joysticks. And you had to wiggle the joysticks in certain combinations. I could never fucking figure it out when I was a kid. But, like, you had to wiggle the joysticks in a certain combination. And um, and you would do fucking cool-ass karate moves. And there was a white dude, like a dude in a white gi, and a dude in a red gi. And, like, that was it. And it was fucking bad. Like, I, I was terrible at it and i was enraptured by it all at the same time loved it and then eventually like got it on the nes and was actually like kind of able to play it and was like oh this is pretty sweet the fucking jumping high kick is the shit <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting uh, they, that uh, karate champ is a game that i don't have a ton of experience with they had it at spaceport in the shore mall i think and uh, oh, I remember playing it once. God, the Shore Mall, the Dirt Mall. Yeah, the Dirt Mall. It was I, I was I was completely thrown off by it because of the whole dual joystick thing, and I was like, I'm out. No, not spending yeah. another quarter on this. I didn't even try to figure it out because I was too enthralled with the other things that were happening in the arcade. Uh, can we uh, can we just uh, by the way uh, for those of you uh, who did not grow up in the uh, South Jersey area, uh, the reason we call this place the Dirt Mall <laughs> is because for a very long time. It had a dirt floor. It did. And there was there there was not actual like that's flooring. not some bullshit. There was no flooring. It was dirt. It was yes. Well, I mean, part of it was outside. Oh my god, the history of the Shore Mall is so weird. It's not even a mall anymore. It's just Boscovs. That sucks. Yeah, they tore down the rest of it. Um, There's a yeah. really <laughs> shitty collectible store in there where dudes charged way too much money for baseball cards. Beachcomber, anyway. and they're still around. There they, it is. They have two Are locations. they really? Yeah, they have uh, two Those locations. guys can get fucked. I'm not even worried about losing <laughs> their sponsorship money. 
I was in, this is going to be a tangent, but I was in one of their stores <laughs> looking to buy a thing. It was a fucking, like, McFarlane sports figure at the time, and I don't even remember who it was, but look, whoever I was looking, it was a baseball player, like look, Derek Jeter or whatever. And um, they were selling it for, like, 60 bucks. And I walked up to the dude, and I was like, yo, I will give you 20. <laughs> he was like, no, no, it's 60. And I was like, no, no, here's the price guide. And, like, I pulled out the fucking price guide from their stand. Like, in front of their register, they had all the price guide. <laughs> so I pulled out the price guide, and I opened it up. And the figure, mint in package, was going for, like, top-end value, $14. And I was like, I will give you six more dollars than book value because I happen to have a 20 in my wallet. How the fuck are you charging $60 for this? And they were like, it's the price, man. We don't go by the guides or whatever. I was like, oh, you're the worst people in the world. I hate everything about you. I hope your business fails. And yeah. apparently, my wish was not granted. No, it was not. Beachcomber I, collectibles I are still around. I, I think they harder, are. Chris. I should have prayed harder. You should. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, and they were, they were such dicks about it too like yeah they were oh never my, nice when i went they in there. were horrible people it was but they, they were, were like so the only mean. place around that i knew of to get like things like comic books or any kind of like crazy collectibles or anything they just yeah they weren't yeah, around they were anywhere else but, jerks yeah anyway really i don't think they ever wanted to be in any business other than like coins and shit like i think that's no, what they like, really cared about but then they were like we'll sell anything that's trendy right now you know like they were mm -hmm. selling pogs and beanie babies mm -hmm. and all sorts of other crap so anyway uh my anyway, sorry, first experience was, with the <laughs> with data east uh so my turn for a tangent so when i was a kid <laughs> Uh, we used to go on vacation at this campground called Starlight Campground, and that was the first arcade that I had ever been to. And God, I just I still remember the layout and the sounds in that place. It's just, I l loved that. What, what's morning. really nice about it is how much faith they had in their campground. Fuck, we better put an arcade here. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I know they, people are coming here to get away and like out in the nature, but build an arcade. Fuck yeah. It. Yeah, they did like you know, had like a whole building with like crafts and whatnot. They had this arcade room that was just just uh it was so wonderful. It had hang on and, and the original punch out and mm. just so much good stuff. But one of the games that they had there that my cousins and me and my sister would play all the time was Rampage. Which played the oh. crap out of Rampage. Loved, love loved, Rampage loved Rampage. So much. And um we we adored that game beyond compare, and so we went home, when we came home from vacation. My sister and I started begging to see if there was a, a way for us to get Rampage, and it turns out there was a version of Rampage on the Nintendo. So uh, we went a to a pretty good version too, a not terrible version. Yeah, we. Yeah, uh, I mean, for what could realistically be expected at the time, it was a pretty good version. Yeah, I will I will partially agree with you on that. Um, from a gameplay perspective, sure. But uh, so we went to the Hamilton Mall. We went to the Electronics Boutique on the upstairs floor, and we got ourselves a copy of Rampage. And I remember on the car ride home, like as soon as we got the package in our hands, like looking at the box art, which was like super cool. It had like this this purple border around it, which was kind of like Data East's um, kind of uniform thing that they did. You know, the old Capcom games had like that weird checkerboard thing in the background the weird grid and like you know back when companies would have like this is what our branded games look like um right so data east uh, it, it was a really cool packaging it was really unique artwork but it, after a few seconds my sister and i realized that only george and lizzie were on the cover of the game yeah no ralph crack that sucker open there was no ralph we were reading the instruction manual no mention of ralph we kept kept that hope that when we got home we'd open it up and put in the game and we'd be able to pick ralph but no there was no Ralph. And that's why I say that this was kind of not the greatest port in the world, because the Sega Master System version had all three characters in it. But well, the NES version, which really, there, I, I, there's no... I can't think of a good reason for them to omit it, like other than they just didn't want to do it. It's not like the limitations of having a third character in there. Like They weren't doing three-player at the same time. They just needed to have the other set of sprites. They didn't have unique move sets. It was just like throw a new sprite in there, but whatever. So it was just George and Lizzie. So that was Sega Master System, clearly a better system. 
Yeah, I disagree. Uh, better at th- at some things. Better at playing Rampage. But so that was my <laughs> my f- my first real interaction with Data East was the NES version of Rampage. But inside that th- that uh, wonderful package. Uh, came this great poster of other Data East games. This is a it was a mm-hmm. gray background. It said something like it was a arcade hits from Data East, and they had this whole set of uh, NES cartridges on there: Cobra Command, Rampage, Karnov, Kid Nicky, Ring King, Side Pocket, Breakthrough, Karate Champ, Burger Time, and RoboCop. And they all had that same border, except they were all different colors on all the different games. And this was where my initial uh, fantasy of wanting to play Karnov came from because right. uh, I, the cover art looks so freaking cool for Karnov. He's just this bald dude spitting a fireball at a pterodactyl, and there's a T Rex in the background. And like, we loved Rampage, even though we were disappointed that we couldn't play as Ralph gameplay wise, it was pretty spot on. It felt like playing the arcade game. And you know, Kid Nicky looked cool, like, everything on here looked cool. And so I was totally in the Data East at this point. And uh, I wanted to try to track down as many of their games as I could. But unfortunately, our local rental places had none of these games. Burger that Time, sucks. I think, was the only, other, the only other one that we were able to get our hands on was Burger Time, uh, which I also loved. Oh, uh, Dude, Burger Time is amazing. Yeah, it is. Burger like, Time is it's, awesome. It's a fantastic game. Like, so, okay, we, we've talked about our first experiences. Do we want to just kind of go through their list of games and kind of alphabetically hit, like, where yeah. we had cool stuff? Yeah, let's just, right. let's just blow through some things here. Um, I, if we're lo- we're, I don't know what that first one is, but um, my sister and I owned Al Unser Jr.'s Turbo Racing. That was a dope game. Yeah, that wasn't a bad racing game. It was, you know, painfully average by modern standards, but, yeah, not Well, bad. sure. Not bad. sure. I mean, at, that's kind of the thing when you look at a lot of these games. There are very, very few standout games that you could not be like, well, I mean, if you compare it to like Burnout, I'm like, well, yeah. Well, yeah, but at the time, <laughs> it was a pretty decent racing game. You could change the colors of your car, which you couldn't do in Rad Racer, so that was neat. And it kind of felt Rad Racer ish. Yeah, I mean, you know, NES racing, you know, NES behind the car racing games kind of had a specific feel to them. And, uh, yeah, Al Unser Jr.'s Turbo Racing, pretty, pretty, pretty not bad. Uh, how about Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja, huh? Dude, Bad, du- bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. Like, first of all, for years, I had no idea that game was called Bad Dudes versus Dragon Well, it's only that in the arcade. The NES Thought game just is just bad. called Bad Dudes. The arcade version is Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja, which I never played until way later in life. Until this past weekend. No, I played record. before that. I actually played yeah. through the entire arcade version at that Yestercades a few years ago with my buddy Brian Rauchy, and uh, that game gets real old real quick. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, stops but... being fun fast. That first 10 minutes is awesome. It is pretty awesome. Great music in that game, too. And my, my music, sister and I would rent the hell out of Bad Dudes on NES. And, like... It looks awesome. It does. The, that, uh... That voiceover, though, on the NES version, like, we used to... We, we were, like, half impressed and half just found it hilarious because I think we were also playing Blades of Steel by this point where like Blades of Steel had some fairly decent voice work for an NES game. Like you could tell that he was saying Blades of Steel and bad dudes. You'd finish the level and you just hear <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> what? Oh, he's saying I'm bad. That's kind of weird, but all right, <laughs> but I'll go with it. I'll go with it. Um, It, it has, I think, I think, I'm I'm safe in saying this. The best storyline intro <laughs> screen of any video game ever. I mean, if we're the talking about premises, Octodad has, does give it a run for its money, but I still think you're the you're absolutely president right. has been captured by ninjas. Kidnapped by ninjas. Kidna- kidnapped. I've had a lot to drink. Are you a bad enough dude? Are you a bad enough dude? To, rescue, to the rescue the president, which is different in the arcade version. What is the arcade version? Um, I'm getting the exact words right now. The arcade version. See, this is this is really funny because uh, 
in the NES version, it just says the president. In the arcade version, it says President Ronnie has been kidnapped by the ninjas. Are you a bad enough dude to rescue Ronnie? Like they were talking. Ronald Reagan is in this game. <laughs> yeah, that that's and Ronald a prox- Reagan. an approximation of Ronald Reagan is in Bad Dudes. Like you save him at the end. That's awesome. And that's, that's really so- something. That's but it's still that dude. He's just this guy with with aviator glasses on and a flat top. And a you know a bomber jacket on, and he's yeah. Just, I mean, it was the eighties. He was yeah. an actor, and that was like totally plausible in the eighties. That like the oh the president has been kidnapped. Let's just send some dudes after. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, I'm not gonna lie, man. I fucking, I was real concerned in the eighties <laughs> about ninjas. Yeah, they were a real problem. Like that and quicksand. I was just gonna say that and quicksand. Like. Those were like the two worst possible outcomes of your day. Like, ah, fuck, there's ninjas in quicksand? Shit. Oh, no. You know what I loved about Bad Dudes? Well, the everything? things that, well, besides everything, like a truck rolls by and it just says dudes on it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a truck full of dudes? What was the point of that? It's just amazing. <laughs> just a truck full of dudes. <laughs> Oh God! That's fucking fantastic, <laughs> dudes. It's seriously, it's just it's this big semi truck, and it just has dudes written on the side. Oh man, that's awesome! God damn it! Oh God boy! God damn it, Chris! All right, oh, so uh, all moving right. on. Uh, what, Bloody Wolf. Bloody Wolf. What is that? A helicopter game? No, Bloody no. Wolf is a uh, side scroller. It was uh, much more famous on the Turbo Graphic sixteen. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, I have almost no experience with this game. Um, it's a badass game. It's one of the games I think we talked about, or at least I talked. about. Uh, it was on your top ten. Some, yeah, yeah, Turbo Graphic stuff. Um, very, very cool That's game. the tank game, right? Breakthrough. No, Breakthrough is um, well, yeah, kind of the tank thing. Um, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's the one. I remember Breakthrough. I don't think I've actually Bloody played Wolf that. Bloody Wolf is very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, Breakthrough was also pretty cool, though, because you were like it was like a, a a much more mobile tank mm-hmm. than, you know, than, than one might expect a tank to be. <laughs> um, but it was uh, it was kind of like a side-scrolling shooter, almost. Yeah, kind of. Right? Like... It was side scrolling, right? Like, I not, believe I'm so. I don't have a ton of experience with breakthrough. I really don't. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at pictures now just to to double check and make sure. But no, it, like it wasn't really a tank. It was more of like a uh like a Mad Max kind of car that you were in. Mm-hmm. Um and like you would it was just like a, a left to right um scrolling shooter. And it oh, was yeah, badass. yeah, I'm looking at it now. Yeah. He was like cruising in this little dune buggy blowing up rocks and shit cool man break it was fun the nes version was good um data east always had really cool uh marquees for their mm-hmm. arcade games yeah like their their marquee artwork was always very very cool very and memorable like, again looking at it now it's awful <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the time uh, at the time in the eighties, it was very cool, and like that's kind of the thing about Data East. Like as we go through and we talk about some of these games, Data East games were they were weird. Like they were always just like a little bit left of center. Yeah, you know there's something I mean? like, always just a little off about them. Yeah, like even right when through, they're fantastic, like Burger Time. Like Burger Time is amazing, but it's like it's it's not Donkey Kong. And it's but it's such a weird fucking idea. It is. You're being chased by like pickles and stuff, and making and you have giant to throw burgers. Salt at them. It's pepper, or pep. Sorry, pepper. But god damn it, is that game fun? The hell was the main character's name in there? Peter Pepper. Peter Pepper. That's it. Yeah. But yeah, like Burger, Burger awesome. Time. Burger Time is one of those games that's been like updated a bunch. Like, didn't Midway put out a version a couple years ago? I say a couple it was probably like ten years ago at this point. Er, maybe. I'm almost positive there was a a more modern Burger Time that was. I'm super sure fresh. there was some sort of weird remake yeah. for it, but oh boy, I'm getting tired. Uh, 
Look, yeah, Chris, I love you're this. Gonna... We're on the letter B. Let's do this thing. Uh, <laughs> um, did you play Captain America in the Avengers? The uh, side scrolling beat 'em up? I did, but let's not run up let's we cannot skip past burn and rubber, aka bump and jump. That's that's a good point. I mean, have you played bump and jump? I have not played bump and jump in a very, very long time. I and love bump and jump on NES. I might have to uh to pull out the emulator and uh and do a little bump and jump after this episode's over. Bump and jump is so stupid cool. It's kinda like Spy Hunter where you're just like cruising around vertical car thing, but your car can jump like super mm-hmm. high and you can like try to land on other cars and jump over these like lakes and stuff. Like dude, bump and jump is an awesome game. And it kind of works because of how crappy the jumping effect is. You know, like, yeah. it's not smooth at all. It's very, very choppy. No. Like, you're just, uh, the animation doesn't really make a lot of sense. None of it really makes a lot of sense, but it's a super fun game. Bumper Jump's awesome. Anyway, like, Cap- that's, what we're, yeah. that's what we're talking about, like, with Data East. It's mm-hmm. like Data East sat there and went, Spy Hunter's pretty cool. What if the car could jump? <laughs> and they went, yes, that's our thing. <laughs> that's the weirdness of fucking Data East for a lot of shit. Word. Captain America and the Avengers. I have played a little bit of this game. I didn't see this in an arcade until after I had played things like Ninja Turtles. And Yeah, this game, comparatively speaking... So, like, okay, if you have played other beat-em-ups before you played Captain America and the Avengers, this one's not great. Yeah. But, but if you played this originally... And you could pick from Iron Man, Captain America, Hawkeye, and the all-white vision. Not like red and yellow and green vision, like the weird all-white vision, and you're going off to, like, fucking fight the Red Skull. This game was fucking dope. The NES port is terrible. (laughs) It's so bad. The Genesis version is really good. The Super Nintendo version is really good. The... Uh, the NES thing that happened was was garbage, but I fucking loved this game. It was I like. Well, I mean, it wasn't even a port at that point. Like it was no. a pl- the NES game is a platformer, and oh, not a shit particularly yeah. good one either. It's, no, at least I don't remember it being good. I'm watching a video of it now, and I remember trying this. God, I forgot all about this game. It's so good. The villains were really cool. Like, I've always had an affinity for, like, certain Marvel villains, and Claw has always been one of them. Like, Claw is in this game, and fucking Living Laser, like, (laughs) the Red Skull did not go for the tippy top of the villain pile. When he was like, all right, this this week's plan, (laughs) I'm going to get fucking Living Laser and Claw. Eh, Like, let's pull some other D list guys and throw them on here, but, like, I was a fucking cool game, man. I really, really dug this game. I lo- it's a side-scrolling beat 'em up featuring the Avengers. Yeah, but like the Avengers of the early no, was it the early nineties, the eighties? When was this? Late eighties, early nineties. This was um, God, like all white vision because that's really what, like sets it apart. Yeah, yeah all was... white vision, super purple Hawkeye. And it's yeah. like it's so cool looking at the poster for this, and Iron Man's way in the back. Like Iron yeah, Man Iron was Man such a D-lister at this point. Like, yeah. oh, and then Iron Man's there too. But like, really, you care about Captain America and Hawkeye and the Vision. It's just so funny. And like Iron Man, as soon as the the movie came out, just changed changed that character forever. Yeah, yeah, way way better. What Anyways, about, um, Captain Silver. Did you ever play that? No. What the hell is Captain Silver? Captain Silver is like a side-scrolling a pirate um, game. That's neat. Yeah, you're a pirate. There was a, uh, I think, God, because it's been so fucking long. I think I played this on the Master System. I don't think I played the NES version, but I remember digging it. Like it was a fun little side-scrolling game, and you're a pirate, which is awesome. I I don't disagree. <laughs> This it's not something you played though. No, I I have zero experience with this game. Sorry, right, I'm checking out a video for for Cobra Command. I don't think I've ever actually played this one either. I was How mixing are you this. Skip over I was mixing this up games? with a chopper. Oh, pff, caveman games. 
That game is so bad. It's just I, I remember being stoked for caveman games, and then like I think we rented it, and we're just like, what the hell? It was awful. Yeah, I mean, please, awful. listeners, correct us if we're wrong, because I might just be remembering shit wrong, but I remember caveman games sucking. No, it does suck. It's terrible. Good. Creatures. Cobra Command, though. Yeah, Cobra Command pretty, looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm realizing now that I don't think I've ever actually played this. I think I was mixing this up with Chopper Command on... Uh, or Choplifter? Or Choplifter, yeah. Because there was Chopper Command on Atari, right? Mm-hmm. Choplifter was... Choplifter um, was the Sega thing. And Choplifter is freaking awesome. Yeah, that's... I'm kind of mixing up Chopper Command and Choplifter in my head. Right? Choplifter wasn't from a 3D perspective, was it? No, it was a side scroller. Right? Wasn't there a there was like a helicopter game? It was an NES game. one too. Yeah, there was an NES version, but wasn't there a um, God? There was some sort of like similar to Afterburner, but with a helicopter, wasn't there? And it was all crappy. Ah, I can't think of it. I don't matter. remember. Let's keep this. Cobra tra- Command was very cool though. Yeah, very it cool looks helicopter cool. game. Um, very fun. Uh, yeah, it was badass. Jeez, I'm looking down this list and uh, Dragon's Lair for Super NES. Good, good job, guys. No version of Dragon's Lair that isn't the arcade version no. is worth talking about. Nope, not good. Boy, there's a. Did lot you play? Of... Uh, did you play Gondomania? Gondomania? No. Yeah. Okay. Gondomania. What was the hell this, is that? Um, it was this really weird arcade game that Data East had, and it was basically. A, uh, a shooter. Okay. But it was like... Like ancient Rome. Okay. Or ancient Greece. I forget now at this point. It's been so long. But it was... You were a dude who was <laughs> in like... An, a, a bad dude. In ancient Greece. Um, but you were flying on a hover bike. Okay. Okay, um, all right. I'm still with and, you. And you would go around and you would like shoot Grecian or Roman soldiers and then like at the end of the level like bosses would show up and they were like mechs and shit. This fucking banana shooter, but it's <laughs> awesome. The gameplay was really cool. Like they had this um they had this system in there. Where, like, you know how, like, in a lot of shooters, you can upgrade your, your ship and your weapons and stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and in, like, in Gradius and whatnot, like, as you collect the things, you get the power-ups automatically and whatever. In this one, like, as you were shooting um, the soldiers and, and whatnot, they would drop coins. And as you were flying through the level, like, power-ups would be out on the field of play, and you could just buy them. Like, if you went, like, if you flew over them and you had enough money, you would, like, buy the upgraded speeder or the upgraded weapon or whatever. Like, it was really fucking weird, but it's a very cool game. Huh. Well, how's yeah, it? It's, it's weird. Gondomania. Man, it, Gondomania. It's very cool. Now, what about Heavy Barrel? Heavy Is- Barrel was also a very, very good arcade game that had a decent enough port. I remember getting a copy of Heavy Barrel, like, kind of later. This was in the Super Nintendo era, but I was collecting NES carts, and one of them came in at my fun call, and I was like, oh, Heavy Barrel, I don't have this game. What mm. the hell is Heavy Barrel? What could this game possibly be? It's just, are you rolling a barrel? Is it yes. Heavy? What, what are you we talking just about roll here? A barrel. No, it's, um, it's a... a... It's like Commando, right? It's like Commando, but with a little bit... Uh, there, there are some... Um... Uh, some side scrolling bits as well. Oh, okay. But you're just like you're a futuri- futuristic military dude. Um <laughs> for so for for when this game came out, it was like in the year two thousand. Which was like that was the other thing when we were kids. That was, it was the VR future. and the year two thousand were like when everything changed. Um but like you were like a fucking laser trooper. <laughs> like and you just I could just run around shooting shit. Like it was, it was super fun, and it had great box art. It did, it did. I love the box art. Yeah, on this that's, thing. that's like, pretty, pretty snazzy looking. Very stark red too. Like the, I, yeah, I was, always remember the end label on that one. It's like yellow letters on red. It's definitely stuck out in a wall of uh, NES cartridges. 
Yeah. Now, the Joe and Max series, I have never played them, but I remember when we were uh, younger, my sister and I, we were kept seeing screenshots for it in, like, Electronic Gaming Monthly, and we kept asking for it for Christmas, and we never got it. But it just mm-hmm. looked so cool. It looked like it was the kind of thing that had just amazing graphics and super fun. Uh, and now I have Joe and Mac for Super Nintendo, and I've still never played it. <laughs> I don't think I have Joe and Mac 2, right? There were only two of them, but... Uh, two or I, three. How many games were in this series? Sequels. There was a uh, uh, these versions. Congo's Caper is supposed to be kind of a sequel to it. Is related. Joe and Mac Two Lost in the Tropics. That's what I remember. Yeah. Uh, they were cute. They were yeah. cute little side-scrolling kind of platformer things. The graphics were very cool. The sprites were cool. Yeah, it kind of reminded um, me of Adventure Island. We liked Adventure Island, which is I think why we wanted to we wanted to try this game so bad. Right, yeah, it, it does have a very similar, it. Um, it has a very similar feel to that, mm-hmm. um, however, Joe and Mac are the caveman ninjas, though, so. Oh, that's true, I forgot they were you caveman know. ninjas. Um, the, Nothing uh, about them is ninja-esque in the least. No, not even a little bit. The uh, One of the dinosaurs, or a couple of the dinosaurs in the game, uh, looked very much like uh, Gone, that uh, the Japanese oh, yeah, yeah, dinosaur yeah. that was in... Um, like I think he made a Tekken appearance at some point. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know honestly if it's the same character or not, but huh. these were cool. They were fun. Now, all right, we, we already talked about Karate Champ. We have Love talked Karate. about Karnov on this show, and what a Our favorite game. pile of garbage Karnov is. Sorry, Our- Karnov lovers out there. Karnov yeah, you're is bad. All wrong. Karnov it's is terrible. a great idea, but a terrible game. Yeah, you brought- please remake it. You brought this to my attention. I didn't know this was a thing, but uh, they, uh, Data East, were working on an arcade port of Lemmings. Yeah, which is it's pretty neat. You can check out a, a like a YouTube video of the um, of it. It's it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it looks just like the Super Nintendo version. I'm curious how it was intended to control. I mean, a trackball seems to make the most sense to me, but because I mean, it was all just pointing and clicking. So I, I don't know. Very weird. Never been a never been a big Lemmings. Fan. Oh, I love the original Lemmings. I never really caught on to any of the sequels, like Tribes and whatnot, uh, or 3D Lemmings. 3D Lemmings was yeah. okay, but um, I love the original Lemmings. I love that game so much. I anyway. don't know. I just never, never have been a uh, a huge fan. Uh, Lock and Chase. Have you ever played this one? No. This is not what I thought it was. This is like kind of a Pac Man clone. Um. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't actually know this game. Weird. All right, <laughs> I don't know why I brought no, it up. I don't. For, I don't know that me. one. Yeah, um, I know the name, and I feel like I have it on something. What did this? What did this come out on? How many consoles is this ported to? Twenty six hundred. I have this on twenty six hundred. That's why I know that name. What the hell does the twenty six hundred version look like? Probably not great. Yeah, you're you're probably right. Lock and <laughs> chase twenty six hundred. Okay, yeah, I recognize this. All right, yeah, well, I've never played the arcade version, but I, I have the uh, the 2600 version, and I've played this. Oh, wow. So that's what the arcade version... That's what that's supposed to look like. Neato. Yeah, this was on, like, everything. Cool, I didn't know this was yeah. a Data East joint. That's cool. You learn so, something new every day. What about, Chris? Okay. What about what Nitro about? Ball? What about Nitro Ball? Do you know? I also Nitro Ball? don't know. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't know Nitro Ball. Okay, I am going to recommend. It's possible that there is a version of Nitro Ball on because Data East put out. I think it was on the Wii. Might have been on other systems, like an arcade collections disc. Yeah, that had a bunch of their games on. This mm-hmm. might be on there. I don't know. If it's not, I'm going to recommend that you. Do a little Googling and find yourself a way to play Nitro Ball. What Nitro Ball basically is, is if you can imagine a oversized pinball machine, okay, where somebody decided to blow up or shrink down the human. I mean, if you want to go a honey, I shrunk the kids kind of way. Okay. And put them into the playing field of a pinball machine, but also gave that person a gun and gave a lot of other people guns 
and then said, kill each other and you win prizes and money. So it's like I'm looking at a I'm looking at a YouTube video of the arcade version. It's like Smash TV. But on a pinball field. But on a pinball field. And there's a power up that you can get which will turn your character into a ball and you will roll around and destroy shit. This is absolutely bananas. I love it's it. It's madness. And it's still and it's amazing. It's still nowhere near as strange as Odama. <laughs> It's pretty fucking close. Though. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, I mean, this is weird, but this is no, nothing is as weird as Odama. In all of my years, I've never played a video <laughs> game that is is even remotely as strange as Odama. Makes Nitro C-Man Ball. It, yeah, it, you're not wrong. Nitro Ball is utter madness. This game is cool. It's <laughs> awesome. It is so much fucking fun. It is one of those games that you like would see in the arcade and be like, huh, I'm going to check this out real quick. And then 20 bucks later, you're still <laughs> fucking playing Nitro Ball. It's so weird. Like, there's really no good way to describe it. I mean, other than like, imagine you had a gun and were trying to kill people um, on a fucking pinball field. But like, this like, not even all money. people like this, this taxi cab just came out and did a little dance yeah, and robots now these and blue ghosts and, and death stuff. just showed up like serious death just showed up, swung a scythe and launched a bunch of fireballs. And that was awesome. It might be the best game ever. <laughs> it is definitely awesome. And it's, I have never having played it this, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to know that this game exists. It is, it is something that you, absolutely owe it to yourself to play i promise you there are two games on this list we'll get to the other one in a couple minutes here but there are two games on this list that are not nearly as loved as they should well maybe the second one is this one needs more love it's amazing I mean, honestly, besides giving a shout out to uh, Richard Simmons giving boxers blowjobs in between rounds and Ring King, um, mm-hmm. I don't really have a whole lot of other games on this list that I have like extreme attachments to. Like, you know, Midnight I Resistance have, is I pretty cool. I have one in particular. Um, um, I'm just looking down this list, to. and uh, I'm not seeing like yeah, like you said, we're not going to get to their pinball stuff. Um, we talked a little bit about Rampage. We did. We already talked about Rampage. Um, we have not talked about Ring King yet. No. Uh, which is side pocket. One of the best boxing games on the NES. Because like Mike Tyson's Punch Out is not a boxing it's game. It's not. You you're right. It's a puzzle game. Um it is it is a rhythm game, but it is not a boxing game. As far as boxing games are concerned, Ring King was fantastic. Yeah, I'd, I would agree with you on that. Ring King. I don't have a ton of experience with it because it's a game that I've only rented, um, but it's it's it just it looks great. It really looks great. But it looks that, great. It moves great. You could do a <laughs> much wider variety of punches. There was much more strategy mm-hmm. to it than a lot of um, even later boxing games that came after it. But I mean, um, even comparing this to great. like the way pro wrestling looks on NES, like it's a very mm-hmm. it's a, done from a similar perspective. But I mean, you've got you know animation on the crowd. You've just got the, the, it's very stark colors. It's really really nice looking. Like this game is very impressive. It's just that ah oh, that the the in between rounds, there's just no erasing that image from your head. No, like there's not. That's that's a dude blowing a dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, no getting around that. That is what's happening there. You, you, you just you can't pretend it's not. That is there a dude are blow there are dude. blow jobs between root, between <laughs> rounds, which I maybe that's helpful. Maybe I've that's how boxing boxed. works. I've never actually seen a live boxing match, so I can't say I've, for sure that this I gotta is be what honest goes with on. you, Chris. I've watched a lot of boxing, and uh, that's never happened <laughs> in any of the fucking fights that I've seen. Like literally never. Like I can't imagine fucking Kelly Pavlik is is getting a blowjob in between rounds. Maybe he is. I don't know. Maybe that's how the ghost rolls. But I, I don't know. It's weird. Other was there than an that, arcade version of this? There was an arcade yes. version of this. Yeah, most Data East games, I believe, had yeah, arcade were, versions were. first. They were a very prolific arcade developer. Dude, NES version looks better. 
It, you're NES version is smoother, um, and and like I feel like the the the, the exaggeration of the character heads wasn't um, quite as wasn't absurd. as big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I gotta say the NES version just looks better than the arcade version, which is you know I guess you know not completely uncommon, just from an art direction perspective. I mean, it, yeah. well, it looks better. Yeah, there were a lot of NES games that played better than their arcade counterparts. I'm looking at you, Rygar. But uh, yeah. th- looking better was not always the case. But I would, I would say that I'd give the NES version the edge here. Neat. So uh, following the alphabetical order here, uh, RoboCop. Oh, true. RoboCop for NES. RoboCop Arcade and NES is... Uh, I mean, RoboCop is like a joke now, right? <laughs> I think like, so. Do people still know RoboCop, Chris? Well, they just had that reboot not that long ago with Michael Keaton they, in it. They did. No, it wasn't Michael Keaton. It was um, Carl Urban. No, he wasn't RoboCop. Michael Keaton was in the movie. Oh, was he? I don't know. I didn't <laughs> see it. I know it was Carl Urban. Though. Was it Carl <laughs> Urban playing RoboCop? I'm almost positive. I could be way off. because I, I know Carl Urban was playing Dread, but RoboCop I he was 2014 RoboCop too. film. Uh, starring. No, I don't think so. Well, okay. let's 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 head to IMDb for for this business. Let's. Evan will edit you, this you, out. You you keep talking. I'll look up the Joel Kinnaman, Joel Kinnaman, whoever that is. Okay. Uh, with so, Alex Murphy slash RoboCop, Gary Oldman was in it. Michael Keaton, really? Jackie Earl Haley. Um, I think Sam Sam Jackson's in it. Yep, yeah, Sam Jackson's in it. Who the hell okay, is well, Joel for, Kinnaman? For Whatever. people who don't know, RoboCop is one of the 80th of 80th movies, right? It is so 80s. It is obscenely 80s. It is about a dude, a cop named Alex Murphy, who in Detroit gets uh, gets gunned down by uh, some crazy drug dealer. And to save him... They put him in a robotic uh, body. They made him a cyborg. They made him a cyborg. And he becomes RoboCop. And if you were a kid in the late 80s, early 90s, you did your damnedest to mimic Alex Murphy slash RoboCop spinning his gun, his handgun, (laughs) on his finger as fast and as cool as he could. Because that was like his thing. And he had this really cool, like, his leg, his cybernetic leg would open up, and that's mm-hmm. where he kept his fucking super cool revolver. It was awesome. RoboCop fucking rules. Data East made a side-scrolling arcade game. That is awesome. There's no reason that this game should look as good or be as fun as it is. But it's fantastic. And then they ported it to the NES. They also made a pinball uh, table that was pretty great, but then they ported it to NES and I think Genesis as well. Um, and it was really good, yeah. They did a really good job translating this one. It had really cool, like, power ups, and it was fun to play, and it controlled really well. Like, it is amazing. And the sequel was not anywhere close <laughs> to being as good as the original Robocop. But it's so fun. Like, I, this is one of those games where, like, th- there were a few side-scrolling shooters back in the day that were just way better than they had any right to be. RoboCop mm-hmm. was one of them. Dick Tracy was another one. Like, the Genesis Dick Tracy is so good and should not be. <laughs> because, like, it's the Warren Beatty Dick Tracy. I, love, I fucking love Dick Tracy. We've talked about this before. Yeah, we have. That game's way better than it should be. Right, I would argue that that game is as good as a Dick, Dick Tracy game should be. <laughs> I I don't know. I like I want God, an Robocop LA... two on an NES is a piece of shit. Oh, it's awful. It's all I like want momentum based. Like that, uh, and his yeah, legs are all short. Like, yeah, it's terrible. No, I want an LA Noir style Dick Tracy. That is fucking what I want. in VR. That's like my fucking dream right there. But um, no man, RoboCop is just this. It, I, it's hard to even explain what makes this game so good 
other than the fact that it was like a video game RoboCop that didn't suck, like that was a big part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, see now RoboCop two in the arcade, while still not as cool as the first one, is considerably better than the NES version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still pretty neat though. But like movie versions of video games have been terrible forever. Yeah, that's I mean, not like, a recent it, trend. It was it, there was back in the day. There, you got some licensed properties that worked out really well. You know, shit like Ninja Turtles, and you know there were some good Simpsons games. And but you know you also had the bad stuff. So now we were just talking mm. about Tron. Tron the arcade game is freaking cool. Mm-hmm. ET for twenty six hundred less cool. Well, yeah, I, RoboCop is great. The Game RoboCop Boy version is terrible. Don't play RoboCop <laughs> 2. RoboCop, yeah, no, when you're done listening to this episode, go watch RoboCop. It's a great movie. Fucking dude's face melts off. <laughs> so, I love it. Um, did you ever play uh, Shadowrun? No. RPG did thing? they do both the Super Nintendo and Genesis versions? I don't know. I know they did the Genesis version. Let's see. They published the Super Nintendo version. So there were two, two totally different games, right? The Genesis and Super Nintendo Shadowruns mm-hmm. were totally different. Yeah. The only Shadowrun I've ever played is the actual pen and paper role playing game. Okay. My, I know we used that to play were, that in high school. There were people that were way into this. This was not for me, but I know people really dug it. Um, so they did Shadowrun. Huh. That's the thing. Shadowrun for Genesis was a year later was developed by Blue Sky Software and Sega published it. So, you know, Data East had nothing to do with the Genesis one, which I believe most people consider to be the superior game. Mm hmm. I have not played it was, either of them. It was definitely a bigger deal on, um, whatchamacallit, on, uh, on the Genesis than it I was, was on stoked. Super Nintendo. I was super stoked to play the Super Nintendo game because we were playing Shadowrun in school. Like, my buddy Adam and I and a couple of other friends, we were playing Shadowrun in school. And then when I heard there was a video game of it, I really wanted to try it. But none of our rental stores had it. And I wasn't really willing to to cash in one of my buy-a-new-game chips on a right. video game version of a, a pen and paper role-playing game we were playing. Like, especially because the screenshots didn't look particularly enticing to me. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't have, a, I don't have very much... Uh, I don't have any experience with Shadowrun for Super Nintendo. Okay. Um, next up on the list is, uh, tag team wrestling. Gotcha. Um, I figured you'd bring this one up. This one I didn't yeah. play. I've never been a wrestling guy, so it just didn't really occur to me that I should play it. Oh, this I was developed this by Technos. Yeah. Oh, maybe I do have to play this. I enjoy this game. Um, I like it. Uh, I liked it a lot back in the day. Um, it is not something that I would even say is, uh, like really worth checking out i mean if if you're into wrestling games um it's worth checking out to see from a historical uh, perspective oh my god yeah it's ugly as shit oh yeah this is not good not when pro wrestling exists no no and like even back then it was like what's the what's the year difference between this this was this i think was 84 well this was 83 in the arcade when did the nes version come out 84, 85, something like that. I mean, well, NES didn't even really come out till 85, 86 in America. Tag team wrestling. I mean, yeah, this is clearly rudimentary, but this is... Yeah, it's ugly as shit. Tag team wrestling. NES, NES was... The NES version was 86. When was pro wrestling? Jesus, because that's just that's just insane. Yeah, this was the same year as pro wrestling. Get out of town. Yeah, get out of here. That's that's not okay. That's really nasty looking. Well, how how far away was Ring King? Ring King for NES was 87. That was only a year later. And Ring King looks outstanding on the NES. Well, let's see. Ring King on NES was developed by a company called Wood Place Incorporated that did... um, really didn't do much else uh fire trap fire battle and the deep and ring king uh so yeah it was just a totally different dev team that was just a a publishing thing but geez that tag team wrestling game is nasty 
It's it's developed awful. by Technos. I, That's so weird that it would look that bad. Yeah, I mean, I played it because it was a wrestling game. I mean, was it at least um, fun? Because I feel like Technos no. doesn't. Oh, that's a shame. No. <laughs> it really wasn't like, and like I said, looking at it objectively, there's really not even anything to like. Yeah, go back and check this out. Like, no, it was. Awful. Huh. Yeah. So, did you play? I would have to imagine you did at some point. Werewolf the Last Warrior. I was Warrior. just going to say, are you bringing up Werewolf the Last Warrior? I fucking loved this game. Did you? I, oh, it's so bad, but I loved it. It was so dumb. Why does the werewolf not have hands? <laughs> Why does he have giant hooks? I, I don't know, man. I, I played cool. very little of this game. Uh, I feel like this was one of those games that... uh we rented and we're just like, what the hell is this? You Werewolf were Werewolf the Last Warrior. Okay, yeah, yep. I you were a this. dude, and then you would become a werewolf that had Baraka hands, mm-hmm. and but only when he swings them. You know, when he's walking, when his he's, hands yeah. are fine. Yeah, um, but you would like walk through this world and just tear shit up. It was awesome. It was like it was it was like a shitty altered beast. Yeah, I don't but know, if you man. didn't have a Genesis, I fucking love this game. I don't care what anybody says. Werewolf the Last Word. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm, rules. I'm not seeing it. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've spent very much time with it. I know I have played it, and I know I have very sour memories of it. And looking at this video, I can tell why. It just looks stupid. There was, <laughs> there was a cool transformation scene, like when you transform into the werewolf. Uh-huh. Like, there was, like, it, there was like an animated um, transformation thing that was pretty dope. Wow, oh, no, the it, last boss really does look like Magneto. That's so weird. Yeah. It, oh, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It was terrible, but I loved it. Um, Funny. But the the very last game, Chris, Windjammers. Windjammers. What oh, do you know wind about Windjammers? Wind Not as much as I'd like. Uh, Windjammers this... is basically it's like crazy ass awesome volleyball, right? The it's Neo air Geo hockey. Game. It's air hockey with a frisbee. Windjammers looks so cool. This is one of those it's games so that I fun. always wanted to play. Like, I remember seeing this in magazines or whatever and being like, man, I want a Neo Geo. There so, no, a, I've never actually played Windjammers. All I know is, is that so I know fun. that it's cool. It's so fun. It's so addicting. It really is. Like, it is, you know, like, again, for kids that grew up, like, in the 80s and 90s, air hockey, and I don't know if air hockey is still a big thing. I don't think it is but it could it's be way still off. in like every arcade um, air hockey is awesome air hockey is great this is air hockey but with a frisbee and it was just you were like on this really small playing field um and it was you against the computer or another person and you would have to throw a frisbee a frisbee and try and get it in um the other person's goal just like an air hockey and you could do like weird spins and trick shots and like bounce it off the walls and stuff it is unbelievably chaotic and fast-paced and ridiculous and they just put a version out um last year on ps4 that is awesome um it it's it was the other game that i was talking about with uh nitro ball that you absolutely those are the two data east games that were like big deal arcade games because we've talked about before how nobody had a neo geo like Mm. you you didn't have a neo geo so this is the one that you probably haven't played that you really, really should. It huh. is phenomenal. Phenomenal game. Well, I I cannot disagree with you. It looks awesome. I've 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 always wanted to be a fan of this game. I'll put it that way. So it's like all these weird trick shots you could do and like power ups and stuff. It was fucking great. It was so much fun. And like that's the thing. Again, like Data East made these just weird ass games weird ideas like there's no way that this should be fun a game about frisbees that's dumb but it worked and they were they what i loved about this company was that they took risks you know like they just they had an idea and they went ah fuck it we're gonna do this and they made some really cool shit you know even looking back at something like rampage which has a movie coming out this year with Dwayne the Rock Johnson and whatnot. Like that's a dumb idea that shouldn't work. Mm-hmm. But it's great. 
Yeah, I I will I will definitely agree with you on on that. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That summary of Data East, like they're they had such an identity. Uh, like these are these are their games, and I remember when the um, it's like it never even really occurred to me that that was the case because um, when the Data East collection you mentioned before came out on Wii, I was like, really, there's a Data East collection? Like what what the hell is in this? Like what? Who remembers Data East games? Then I start looking through the games included. And I was like, yeah, they they really did have their own identity. They had their own thing that they did, and it was weird as hell. And uh, it was great. It was just it was just great. I guess they don't really do much anymore, right? They're they're defunct. no. They went they went out of business um, in the early two thousands, I believe. Oh three, they, like oh three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they they were purchased and like. A bunch of their um, IPs went to like one place, and then a bunch of people bought another place. Some of the developers have gone on to work on uh, some of the Donkey Kong Country games, mm-hmm. um, you know, which um, they've made some weird stuff. We we really didn't even talk about their um, uh, their uh, pinball yeah, output, yeah. which was uh, just in, insane. I mean, some of some of the stuff they put out was just fucking crazy. Um, some of like the most loved pinball tables are Data East tables, um, which really that is a very rare thing. Like Capcom and Konami did not put out, you know, tables. Yeah, that wasn't there. Like it, it just wasn't a thing that they did. But Data East was able to crank out like everything you could possibly want in an arcade. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like they they're just a, this really interesting developer that unfortunately like so many of them from back then have have gone by the wayside and been uh been absorbed by, you know, this that or whatever company and Yeah, they did have a hard time maintaining relevance, you know, after a certain point. Uh they were just well, cuz I, mean, I mean you keep making weird shit like that and you're just going to they you're going to carve out a niche and they had a niche it just wasn't a very big one you know none of the games that we talked about were these huge crazy success stories you know what i mean like you know they they had a couple of great licenses that they did things with like the having getting to do the NES port of Rampage was a big deal but you know they didn't make deal. Rampage and you know they right their big games were never the biggest. Like we kept talking about like, you know, tag team wrestling, there was pro wrestling ring King. There was punch out. You know what I mean? Like even though they, those games are an exact analogs, they were always overshadowed by something else of the same variety. That was bigger. I mean, really, you know, kid Nikki and, uh, friggin', uh, karate champ, like they're unique games, but they were always overshadowed by things like, you know, well, there was a karate kid game. You know, granted it wasn't mm-hmm. a spectacular game, but it had the name, the karate kid or, or Kung Fu, you know what I'm talking about? Like right. these kinds of things were always overshadowed by other things that were just bigger. And, uh, you know, and I'm thinking about NES games cause that's kind of where my brain usually is. But as, as a company, you know, they got overshadowed. I mean, as great as the pinball games that they made were, you know, pinball went through its own, whole uh you know circling the toilet bowl kind of a situation so you know they weren't going to be cranking in a whole bunch of money from their pinball games and arcades kind of died out and as a home console manufacturer like you know at the end of the day if you remember you remember bad dudes or double dragon most people remember double dragon you know it's yeah that's just the 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 way of things they uh they went on i just looked it up real quick so i could have the exact games they went on you know because like we said they they made this weird shit and their spirit kind of lives on. Payon mm-hmm. is kind of an offshoot of theirs, and the the Donkey Kong games that they worked on were uh, DK King of Swing, which is weird. That uh, is a Donkey weird Kong, game. Donkey Kong Barrel Blast for the Wii, uh... and then DK Jungle Climber. So, like, not even talking about the relative quality of those games, but the weirdness of those games fits right along with like, yeah, those are Data East games. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's the, they're also, I mean, the Payon worked with Nintendo on uh, Glory of Heracles, um, which is one of their, it's, it's, it's got its own decent set of uh, popularity in Japan. They tried localizing right. it on the DS, but it's funny that you mentioned those, those Donkey Kong games, because the, the, the King of Swing games, the ones that you're talking about, they're, they're pretty neat, those, those mm-hmm. DK games. Uh, the, the, you said Barrel Blast, right? 
Uh, Barrel Blast and Jungle Climber. Okay, so Jungle Climber and King of Swing. Like Jungle Climber is a sequel to King of Swing. Uh, so it's that's you know basically the same premise. Uh, right. The, the coolest thing I think about those games is not necessarily they're bad games on their own because they're not. They're pretty neat. But um, I think the second one, King of Swing, you can unlock bubbles from Clue Clue Land as a uh, playable character, oh. which is absolutely <laughs> insane uh, that that's that character bananas. has now appeared in more than one game. But um, <clears throat> the the donkey, the other one, the racing one you're talking about, Barrel Blast, was originally supposed to be uh, Bongo Blast. It was a racing right. game that used the DK Bongos, which was actually a pretty cool concept. But since the DK Bongos you know what was it um uh jungle beat which is a freaking phenomenal game didn't take off they eventually moved production of that game over to the wii where it didn't quite work as well as i think it would have on the bongos uh but that's that's neat i didn't know that the that payon was behind that and that's really cool just a ridiculous developer quite and i'm glad we took the time to talk about him i know we've been at this for a long time thanks for sticking with us if you're still here but uh I'm glad we took the time to, to, to break things down and talk about how much we liked them because Data East is one of those cool ass companies that I think just doesn't get the uh, just doesn't get the love it deserves because um, you know they're they're not thought of in the same way like nobody's itching to get the bad dudes into Smash Brothers you know what I mean like Peter Pepper as it doesn't have the staying power of a uh, of Pac Man and. Uh, but he should. But he should. Burger Time is amazing. Burger Time is amazing. And if there's anything we learned here tonight, it's that it it's that Burger Time is amazing. If there's anything to take away, is go watch RoboCop and then play Burger Time. And then beg plead for somebody to make an awesome Karnov game. Yes. Great world shitty game. Great world. Karnov and Smash Brothers is a great idea. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a great idea well on that great idea i'm gonna call it i'm gonna say that that is our show and thank you very much for listening to it join us next week when it's time for the march uh 2018 10 20 30 i have not looked at my notes i can't think of any games that came out in march uh of any of those years 10 20 and 30 years ago but i will by the time next week shows up and i've written the show notes so look forward to that once again, you can get in touch with us. We did a uh, no, sorry, ahead. Chris, no, but ahead. real quick, we did get a suggestion from a friend of the show, Jay, uh, who said that if we were good at our jobs, we would have realized that when we were recording these episodes, uh, it was during the time of March Madness, and we would have developed some sort of bracket uh, for people to vote on on the uh, Stone Age Gamer uh, website and blog and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So next year. Yeah, that sounds like a we'll really good idea. That. And you're right. We are not good at our jobs. But if you listen We're to the not. show, you know that. This is not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Somebody commented, somebody commented on a blog post like, oh, well, this, this article's stupid. Like, you're some kind of expert. Like, where did this guy get the idea that I claimed I was an expert? Like, mm. just... Were you writing? Were you writing about uh, Nintendo stuff? I was writing about Star Wars games, which, to oh. be fair, you know, I didn't wasn't writing about anything that I, I think he was complaining that I was saying that Masters of Terras Kasi is a flaming piece of shit. Uh, it is though. It is. That's a fact. <laughs> so I'm sorry. That that's not an opinion. I don't need to be an expert to tell you that Masters of Terras Kasi is a pile of garbage. Nope, I have eyeballs. Anyway, once again, you can get in touch with us at mail at geekade.com, as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. You can like us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram at Geekade. You can subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for all our latest video content, and you can follow us on Twitter at the underscore Geekade. You can also find us individually on Twitter. I'm at Geekade Chris. And Dan, where can people find your lovely face on Twitter? At Geekade Dan. If it's not really my, it's Bernie Sanders' face. That's but true. He's drinking a beer. So what could be drinking bad? a heady topper? It's like the coolest picture ever. If you're interested in more information about anything we discussed here tonight, be sure to check out Wikipedia because that's where we can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be sure to check out our show because notes. Honestly, all of this shit is already there and it won't take you two hours to get through. <laughs> You can also subscribe to this and other wonderful podcasts on iTunes or Stitcher or if you're super nice. 
<laughs> you can leave us a review because any and all feedback is welcome and appreciated. We'd also like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making this show listenable for all you folks. And we'd like to thank Mark TDK Knight for our show's theme. You can check him out on SoundCloud and Bandcamp or his website, which we will have a link to in the show notes. Uh, once again, always remember to keep your eyes on geekate.com for more fresh original content. And just one last plug, uh, I was a guest on Banjo Guy Ollie's new podcast, the Mother Folkers podcast, and uh, I, I, was, I think that episode's coming up pretty soon, I mean, either the next one or the one after that, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to hear me and Ollie, just, if you want to hear me being interviewed for a change, uh, I don't know why anyone would want, would want to, but Ollie and I were just going at it for a good long time, because, man, I could talk to that guy forever, so keep an eye out on that, I'll show up on his YouTube channel sometime soon. And that's it. Yeah, I tell, I wouldn't interview you. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't be interviewed by you. I would refuse. You're you're not that interesting. I'm really not. I don't know why. I'm people... a good questioner though. If you're listening to this show, please email us and tell us why. <laughs> that's it, everybody. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games. <laughs>